All right, Tia. Our broadcasting platform crashed. And so we had to reboot everything, but such as life happens. So I hope we give everybody enough time to get back in the room here. Where where we going? Are we are we broadcasting any yes. at all right now? Yes, we are. We're back on, but we're waiting for a few more people to come in the room. Interesting thing about going off and then coming back on again is that there's always more people that come in the room when you first come on than if you've been on for a little while. Because, you know, people are scrolling by and then they stop and then they listen and Hopefully they don't listen just for five seconds and move on. Hopefully they stay with me for the hour that I'm going to be on. So uh, we got it on. Praise the Lord. Tia, you're still with me, right? I'm still here. Yes. All right. So we were talking about you're we talking about your job and and what you have to do if you're not feeling well. You, of course, you don't come in. That that that's really the obvious. I guess you should have known that. No this sense in suit. <laughs> no sense in suiting up if you're not sick, right? Well, and there's such a shortage of, for one reason or another, of protective equipment. Uh, you know, I'm sure if we, if they had the stuff for us all to suit up uh, all the time, then I mean, during this type of a deal, then they would. But they're rationing for the hospitals at the moment, oh, wow. and wow. for. Um, anybody who could possibly have it that for whatever reason still has to work if they're not sure mm -hmm. um there's yeah there's there's a lot of uncertainty i mean i i have had i was sick a few weeks back took the time off did everything i needed you know to do and uh, i still got a sore throat and i just got off the phone with the doctor just to make sure yeah that that's good i needed to do to keep yeah keep yeah safe you know, uh, I don't know if people want to hear my remarks or my comments or my ideas or not. I'm I'm a little hesitant to give them, actually. But isn't that horrible? I'm doing a radio show, and I'm hesitant to give my ideas. But It's a sensitive topic. A lot of <laughs> it is. Yes, that's right. Well, I think, here here's what I think. I've been to China, what is it, six or seven times. Smuggled Bibles. I know what communism is about. I know how those people, that government, is what I should say. Those that government, I know how that government acts. Not the people. People are sweet. Um, but I think personally, this is a biological warfare that was intended to crash the economy, make our president look bad, and lo and behold, out of the blue, somehow, some way, we figured out that this malaria pill, which I've taken in the past in my missions trips. A big old honking horse pill about the size of a half dollar. And it's brown, ugly. It looks like you're swallowing a, a coin of fertilizer. <laughs> <laughs> and it makes you sick to your stomach, but it works against malaria. And um, so, so, so I think that God intervened, gave us the, the remedy, or at least a short-term remedy. And I think we're, I think we were, we were invaded, and this is why I think President Trump calls it a war. I believe we were invaded by a biological warfare, both us and, and Europe. I mean, communism does not like, uh, uh, true, it, it's been over 142 nations, maybe more, 152. So I'm sure that communist countries got it just as much as dem countries that stand for democracy. But I, I really do believe that if it was intended or not intended, I don't know. But but I just know communism. I know how that goes, and that's not good. There are a lot of players in the game at this point. I mean, there's a lot of different um, benefits or consequences, I should say, good and bad, however you look at it. Um, you can – one, yes, retaliation. I have – since the beginning of this thing, in my spirit, I felt like that there's something really underhanded going on, whether this was a virus that was exposed or whether this was a man-made virus. Um, I don't know, but that's just kind of, that's been personally, in my opinion, in my spirit for a while. Yeah, and it shouldn't really shock any of us because we all knew that it was, um, we all knew that that was out there and it's a possibility. 
But it, what, it, what it should do is it should be a wake-up call to every Christian to stand by the blood of Jesus and know how to pray and know how to stand in faith. And that's, that's the important part. Well, Tia, anything else on your mind? I want to move, move along tonight, unless anything else is on your heart you want to pray for tonight? Well, I was just going to say real quick that this is a sort of a dry run for saints and sinners alike. Um, you know, you, this is an opportunity to really dig into God's Word and yes. spend the time that we have to stay, have a, at home where we would normally be busy filling up our time to really see what God says and to really hear His voice. I mean, it's one of so the true. reasons that I sow so much is because I've seen God says, you know, the Bible says, taste and see that I'm good. You know, yeah. taste and see that God is good. We, we, he doesn't just ask us to give all of our everything and have Him do nothing in return. Right. You know, he loves us. He wants good things for us. He wants an obedient heart out of us. And but, but we've got to give a little bit, too. I, I remember back in Louisiana when I was going through my divorce, um, when my husband left, I was sitting in church, and I I, I had run ministry uh, for, like, school-age kids, and I quit for a while because I'm just, I had a bitter heart towards God through what I was going through. Um, and I, I was, <laughs> and my pastor wasn't super happy about that, but, I, I'm you know, I'm doing what I felt like was the right thing to do and not putting that on the kids. And I'm, so I'm sitting in church praying about this and praying about my bitterness and just asking God why and um, pleading and probably whining. <laughs> and I just remember God as plain as day just saying, like, I'm not a crystal ball. Like, if you want to have a relationship with me, you choose to have a relationship with me. But I'm not making you do this. Right. And it was just such a, it took me back. I just, I really had to, I never thought about it that way before or thought that he would respond to me that way. Mm. And I, I, I took a step back and thought about it. And um, as I was leaving church, I'm like, I'm like, wow, well, I, I have this choice. I can either continue in the suffering and being angry or I can choose to believe him even though I don't feel anything right now yeah, and yeah. I chose to believe him and the next day he provided me experiences and I just felt it was like the like God opened the window to the heavens I've never felt that way or that much glory it just divine divine appointments that day mm -hmm. that was just like God was being like see <laughs> like this is a reciprocal thing. Yeah. I've been here for you, but I need you to trust me too. And that's what we're doing in this. So time. good. And I, I need you to trust me. So good. That's right. It, it's a reciprocal thing. It goes both ways. Uh, what kind of a relationship is it if just one loves the other and the other doesn't love back? And that's really what God's wanting from us. He said, I'm not going to force you to love me, did he? No, it's it's not religion, it's relationship. Yeah, that's it. That's so true. Well, how, how long ago was that? Uh, this was in, ooh, I think that, that was either 2015 or 2016 that that happened. Yeah. So, I mean, it wasn't that long ago. Right, um, right. But, but you pressed in with God. He moved you to Washington State from Louisiana. That's a big change. Even though I didn't want to go, <laughs> I was sitting in the middle of a prayer group, and he goes, and he told me a specific ministry and that it was going to be in Portland, and I fought him for the better part of a year and a half. Wow. And uh, You got to stop fighting yeah. God, Tia. He always wins. <laughs> <laughs> I'm realizing <laughs> He always oh, wins. Times. That's right. I think he's just got to be shaking his head at me. <laughs> it's like that one, that one. Well, here's the thing. He, you never rocked him off his throne. It's We've never done anything that he hasn't already seen before, and he loves us like children, and that's comforting to know. Yeah. Yeah. And he's, he's such a good dad. I mean, even though I don't understand 
some of the things that he does or why he does them or why he does them in that way. Yeah. Learning to accept that his answers are going to come in ways through people, through situations, answered in ways that I didn't necessarily want or expect at the time. Right. Learning to let go of my expectations of how he was going to answer me right to just letting him answer me that was one of the biggest things that changed my life wow i love it because nothing i mean even just meeting you i you you just you're not my typical cup of tea david i love you but <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it 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 you know but it's the same thing with prophecy in general i never really believed in that stuff i mean god gave me visions and dreams and things like that but as far as somebody speaking a word over my life i'm like hmm, i don't know i didn't know that Satan work. wow oh, yeah. i that was actually until i don't know maybe a year or two before my divorce that i i found somebody um that would speak at my church in louisiana that god just softened my heart towards and i'm like okay i'm gonna step out of faith and i'm gonna say you know God, your word says to test the spirits. He's, you know, if this is from you, right? Like, show me it's from you. Yes. And yes. I got out of my comfort zone, just like with you. I got out of my comfort zone, and even though some things rub me the wrong way, I still listened because there was a reason I was there. Yeah. And you can always learn something from everybody, yeah. whether that's watching them make their own mistakes whether that's them teaching you something whether that's the way teaching you how to interact mm -hmm. with different people or just expanding your perspective right um you know that that's what he did with me in faith and in and in sewing and it it's so frustrating now to like if i was <laughs> i i once i get something sometimes i i have less patience than i could sometimes with people who are learning the same lessons that i just did yeah and i because I, I just want to yell i'll be like no you know like no god really works this way it's not <laughs> it's not necessarily somebody coming to just grab your money it's like it's like laying something down like i i have very little and so i want to hoard this all to myself but god's like he wants all of us he wants all of our hearts he wants he says you know seek me with everything you got and that includes your money that includes anything that you saying i'm going to give the control to yeah like i'm going to give money the control of my life i'm going to give my husband the control of my life now that you're not supposed to submit but but as far as making it your god i mean that's what it is is saying that this one thing has total rule and so i'm going to give all of my time and emotion and trust in that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so when i gave that memorial gift away a while back yeah um that was one of the hardest things i've ever done especially wow. with money but it came um, to you so quickly i noticed i mean I'm, I'm sure you didn't feel like it but it came to you so quickly and god really showed out for you and he changed my heart in that way and now i am like i feel there's still things that he's working on there but i feel free to be able to give and i want to I want to give, I want to be able to support and I want to be able to trust that my dad's got my back. You know, yeah. that, um, when you prayed over, um, cause you know, my car situation, but when, after I gave and you, you said at some point, you said that you're going to stop, that God told you that you're going to stop waking, going to bed with something resolved and waking up with more problems. God mm. stop that since then. And since I gave like, not that my car is the best car, but I have stopped having problems every day with it. Really? And wow. It's not a new car, you know, it's yeah. just a new car that I'm praying for and believing for. Uh -huh. But I listened to what he was telling me. I listened to what you have right now, I am making sufficient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Tia, can I share? Can I share with the people what what it is that you that the Lord spoke to you, or, or would you share with the people what the Lord spoke to you to give? Um, sure. So, I um, <laughs> I've always been kind of a, a twenty dollar giver, uh, similar to to David's testimony that he shared a while back. Uh, I, I don't know if that was on here. No, it was in person. 
Yeah, I was so uh, excited to be a $20 man. Everywhere I went, I gave $20 to the Lord, and it was a big deal, you know. It feels like a big deal at the time because <laughs> you're giving, that's you're giving right. a tiny bit. <laughs> yeah, but then God spoke to me, and he spoke to you to give the largest seed I've ever sown, and he spoke to you to give $1,000, and, and that just kind of really was like knocks the breath out of you, I guess. Well, it's like I don't even, as far as the divorce and what I make and the car issues that I've had and just, it was just like my, like my money is felt like it's just gone into a sinkhole. And Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I get my tax return back, which is actually less than a thousand dollars. And I'm like, you, I'm like, okay, God, now you want me to what now? Right, (laughs) right. And it it wasn't just like, he didn't just speak to me like, you give a thousand dollars right now, Tia. (laughs) Right. He challenged your heart and stretched you. Yes. And it was through a story that you said, and I just knew, because God confirms things like that, you know, he really talks to us a whole lot more than we give him credit for. That's right. We just don't know how to listen. Yeah. And, And he gets our attention sometimes when we don't know how to listen by by touching our heart with something that he knows we'll pay attention to. Yes, yes. And that was that was your, not just your story, but the, the little prophetic things that you had said and the things that had happened throughout my day and just being in a hard time and seeking him for the answer for this thing that just feels so monetarily beyond me. Yeah. And I'm like, I, you're like, I'm like, I, my car is falling apart. Like, I, I literally lose my job if I don't have a working vehicle. Mm-hmm. So how, God, do you want me to give $1,000? How, how am I supposed to trust you with that? Would I, I can't trust this vehicle to run every day. Because mm-hmm. I'm literally taking this thing in every single week. Right. And to the point where people are thinking that my mechanic is scamming me. <laughs> I'm serious. Oh, no. I'm serious. But he wasn't, right? And no, no, and he he's a Christian, and just, he didn't have an explanation for it either, just didn't even, you know, I'd call up, and they're like, they knew my phone number. By well, now. I have an explanation <laughs> for it. I have an explanation. Everything in life breaks. That's just the world we live in. Everything in life breaks, and whether it's new or old, that's what happens, and so that's what it was, just things getting old. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In, an, in a very accelerated fashion. <laughs> yeah. But either way, uh, I, I I made the pledge that night to sew, and I was crying while I was doing it, and just real, real hard crying. And I spent, you know what, I even, and I'm saying this part for the benefit of people that are listening right now, because I spent a better part of, I don't know, two, two to four weeks. I'm not. I'm not exactly sure of the timeline, but even like, even feeling a little bit like I might have gotten bested by somebody trying to get my money. Mm-hmm. If that's what your spirit was. Mm-hmm. That is the knee jerk feeling that you get when you give that and you don't have an immediate return. Yeah, yeah. So you had never sown this big amount before. I didn't know that this was going on with you and, until just now. And you were really proving God, and, and God just started stretching your faith and started supplying for you. Because now it, it, you take it in incremental payments, and you made a little payment here and a little payment there. And before you knew it, it was paid in full as unto the Lord. Every time a payment would come in to you, I would pray over that and ask the Lord to begin to lift the things that were attacking you. Well, I didn't know. Obviously, your car stopped breaking down. Sometimes God's just wanting to see if we can trust him with everything we have. And that was a new experience for you. I prayed with my wife tonight that God would put it upon somebody's heart that's watching to stretch their faith and sow a $1,000 seed into this ministry in a, in a time like this. Her and I both came into our room upstairs, and we joined hands, and we asked the Lord. And, and I had no idea you were going to call and tell this story. I had no idea you were going to talk about this. But I know it's challenged somebody that they're going to sow $1,000. Perhaps they've never sown anything that large before. But God can use an offering like that, a miracle offering, 
totally turn things around. And you're seeing turn around in your life, Tia. And not just with my car, but in my spiritual gifts, in my understanding mm. um, about who God is. Mm -hmm. uh, just stuff that I've been blocked up with that I I didn't know how to get around. Um, it's just like he... It's like having having a faucet that just drips. Yeah. And then somebody just you know, greases it a little bit and turns it, and then it just starts. It just starts to flow. It doesn't mean that it's turned all the way on. It doesn't mean that it's, you know. But it's no longer dripping. It's flowing. Yes. Yeah, that's awesome. Tia, would you would you take a moment? Can I put you on the spot? Can you pray for that person listening or watching that is being stretched in the area of faith for their life? I I kind of feel like you maybe sense that I was going to do this tonight, maybe not, but can you pray for somebody who's struggling in their faith right now and, and maybe the Lord's stretching them? Yeah. I just, I just want to come with you, listener, whoever you are, in agreement that this is not an easy thing yes. to do. Yes. And God, I just, I ask that what you spoke into their heart, Father, that you would give them some peace about it maybe you know it maybe they're still nervous but god I, I just ask that you would give them a peace and a reassurance that um that it is you speaking yes god that that you are there that you're holding them in their situation yes. and father that all things that you do god is you do for the good of those that love you. Yes, Lord. And I think this person really does love you, and I think this person wants to get closer with you, God. And yes, Jesus. Thank you for them. And I. Yes. Can I ask Father for the courage? Yes, Lord. To be able to step out and do this, and when they do it, God, to just give them this exhale. Oh yeah, Father. that's right. A peace and an exhale. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And that they'll know that even if they aren't sure where the funds are going to come from to replace these or, or to bless them in other areas, God, um, that you would bless them. You would give them a spirit of wisdom, uh -huh. God, a spirit of, of revelation in your word yes. and in you and, and an enhancement for them, God, that you your voice, you, they would be more in tune. Yes. What you're speaking to them, God. Father, that you would bless them in their finance, that you would bless them in their home, that you would bless them in their health. Yes, Lord. God, that I just, in fact, God, I just ask a double portion on this person, Father. Not not as a um, an incentive to give, Father, but as a blessing for yeah. something. Yes, Lord. That they're doing from somebody else who loves you and who wants to see them blessed. That's right. That's right. I agree. Just thank you, God. I mix my faith with Tia right now, Lord, and I agree. And I thank you, Father, that faith stops at every question mark. We, may we always get that. And I pray, Lord, that faith will never stop. The flow of faith will never stop into my brother or my sister. I take authority over every demon power that would try to come against my brother or my sister. And I thank you, Father, for the free flows a flowing of favor and blessing into their life in jesus name i pray amen and amen, amen. i agree to you praise the lord i'm so glad you got through me too yeah keep praying we're going to add some more lines and i think once we add some more lines we'll be able to take more calls like this this is exciting this is going to be good amen i encourage anybody who's got something to say or something that God's putting on your heart, man. It, it blesses you as much as it blesses somebody else. Amen. That's true. Tia, tell your mom I love her. Tell her I miss her. And we'll see, see each other soon in another meeting there in Vancouver, Washington. Praise God for you. Thank God for your call. Oh, I love it. The effectual fervent prayer of righteous men and women get great results. That's my paraphrase. Book of James. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman gets great results. 
I want to hear from you tonight, no matter where you are. I want to take your call tonight. Thank you, Tia. That's a great call. Hello, caller. What's on your mind tonight? Hey, Pastor Wood. This is, I don't know if you remember me or not, from uh, Yuma, Arizona, that little full gospel lighthouse church. Um, this is Catherine. Catherine, I remember the church. And if you keep talking, I'll probably remember who you are. But I, I absolutely love Yuma, and I love not just the weather. The, the people there love the Holy Spirit and the move of the Holy Spirit. Oh, I'm telling you. Well, I was telling my husband now, because um, you were, I think you had visited. I'm not sure what the dates were. And I had told my husband the story about you, you know, giving me a prophetic word about marriage hmm. and everything. Okay. And I remember I, I remember I told the Lord, I said, um, you know, I was at a point in my walk with the Lord that I told him, I said, I don't want to get married. I just want to be, you know, you and, you and I. And I had put a ring on my finger. And that night when you came and ministered, it was so funny. Um, you told me, you said, the Lord says, take that off your hand when you get married. Oh, my and, goodness. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and here I am, and I got, um, I think you came in 2013 or 14. I'm not sure. That sounds right. I can't remember the specific date, but um, that had been spoken over me. And then people kept ministering about, you know, like marriage and different things. And I just continued to trust God. I'm like, okay, we'll see what happens. Did, did you take the ring off? How long How long was it, Catherine, after I gave that word that you actually took the ring off? Was it immediately or did you wait a few days? I had waited that night. I'm like, really? Because, you know, the, you know I was. Wait a minute. <laughs> Catherine, did, I, did you get angry at the prophet? No, it was just, I was not angry at the prophet. I was just, like, I had, you know, people, like, already asking for dates and stuff. And I just. Oh, really? <laughs> and that's why I told the Lord, I said, I'm just, I don't want to do that no more. I just. You want to be married to Jesus, who is full of peace and full of love and full of kindness. And you're okay and he's okay. That's the way you thought. Uh huh. That's exactly it. And I'm and like, then, okay, Lord, you know, we'll see what happens. And then here comes the prophet, and I say, take that ring off. I, I'm, I'm startled. I said I that. I had to be under the anointing to yeah. say that. <laughs> yeah, and that's why I told my husband. I, I mean, I, because I had a talk with the Lord. I'm like, you know, I just, I was still, you know, I'm going to be 29 now. I'm going to be 30. I'm 29. Uh -huh. I was still just, you know, in my early. 20s and I'm just like I don't want to I don't want to go down I just you know I had made so many errors before that I just wanted to be right with God I just wanted to do what was right and I said I don't want to that unless you're really in it so let's just put this ring on there and let's just <laughs> pull them off and see what you're really wanting from me and anyways and then the Lord just I mean then there was a there was another thing that happened, and I just want to talk about God's faithfulness. I mean, he's just been so faithful to us. And there was another thing come up about me moving from Arizona. Okay, hold on a minute. Hold on, Catherine. You, I, I remember who you are now as you've, as you've been talking. Yeah. You got married? <laughs> yeah, I got married in October of 2018. I met the gentleman in... Um, Sometime in November of 2017, dated almost for a year. God just, I mean, the whole thing was just a God thing. He came with two kids of his own. And so I have like a, I have a, a God-given two girls so that I'm helping that live with us. And we've been married since 2000, October, what is it, 13th, 2018. Wow, Catherine, and I mean, amazing. And then I'm also... I'm also expecting I'm 34 weeks. Oh! I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> uh, I'm like, really? No. 
idea. Yeah. Wow. Four weeks pregnant right now. Amazing. So, now, so now, where do you, you don't live in Yuma anymore? No, I currently reside in Oklahoma. In I Oklahoma. Had to to Oklahoma in 2015. Okay. And like I said, I just kept working and going to school and seeing what God wanted because I was in a season where I was helping a lady from church uh-huh. that her family couldn't help her. Yeah. And I stayed with her to help her. And as soon as they were able to, it's like, God's like, here you go. I want you to start in again. And I'm like, okay, how do I do this? Mm-hmm. And he just, he provided the right person. And like I said, he had two girls from a previous marriage. And, uh, you know, we ended up getting married in 2017. And now here I am expecting my first wow. with him. And we're, you know, it's, man, I'll tell you, I can tell you how much. I can write. I can probably write a book about how God just showed out and just been so faithful to us. He really has, so and I just to- that is. I am so glad you told me that. What a blessing! You know, I keep thinking now that you're in Oklahoma. I got to ask your husband: Is he a boomer or a sooner? He is a. He is a. He is a OU fan. Okay. <laughs> he is a, he, he's a boomer sooner all the way. I had to learn about all that coming down here, I'll tell you. I'm like, man, what is this all about? What are you guys talking about? Yeah, Catherine, I, I've traveled all over the United States, and every every place is different. I want you to, I want you to think about a person that may be listening, maybe right now in Yuma, your hometown, uh, maybe there in Oklahoma, wherever. I want you to think about that young lady who feels the same way you felt, just put a ring on it and said, I don't want to mess with it no more. If God can answer your prayer, and you really weren't even praying for it, but if God can do this for your life, couldn't God do it in somebody else's life? Exactly, and that's why I call it to encourage someone, because like I said, you know, when we ask the Lord into our hearts, He forgives us, and when we have a pure heart before Him, and we want to do what's right, he will, you know, he will, you may not know how, you may maybe like, I don't want to deal with this, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, but he does. I mean, I never in my wildest dreams would imagine that I would have got married and yet alone even be having two blessings from another marriage. Yeah. And now I'm expecting. Now you're like, expecting. Wow. I've never, I never would have imagined what it is just. You know, if someone out there is waiting, yeah. you know, maybe this could help them, you know, because we, we are, we, we're going through seasons despite what's going on in the world. Right, the right. seasons are going to come. Yeah. So. You know, i just so thankful that hard. God spoke to you during that time. And you've seen a lot of the miracles that took place in those meetings there in Yuma. I know some people got, oh, gosh, yes. they, they get mad, they get angry with the prophetic flow and they get angry with the miraculous and, and I've not been asked back to, to Yuma, but, but I, I'm just so thankful for what he did in your life, not to mention the other people's lives I'm and you. it's so powerful. Would you take a moment and pray for that young lady or for that young man who just wants to throw in the towel on marriage and, and give up? I want you to pray for somebody right now that they won't lose hope. Can you do that? Yes. Of course. Yes, I will definitely do that. Yeah, let's do that right now. We just come before you in the name. We just come before you, Lord Jesus. And God, you are a faithful God, Lord. No matter what happens in our past, no matter what happens, you know, just if we've had bad experiences with marriage, God, you are a God that makes all things new. Your word declares that, Lord, yeah. and that means in every part of our life. So, God, I just pray for the young lady or lady or gentleman yes, Lord. that, Lord, might be waiting for that person in their life. Yes, Jesus. God, as you've done with me, I had no idea what was going to happen, but you did. You did it, Lord. Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you'd bless them, that you'd strengthen them in the inner man. Yes, Lord. God, that they'd know that you haven't given up and that God, they would have a new look yes. on what you're going to do in their life. Yes, in Lord. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I mix my faith, and I thank you, Father. Two is better than one. And I thank you, Lord, for 
this miracle man you brought into Catherine's life and for this baby. Oh, God, this is your little bundle of purpose. And I thank you, Father, that the flow of prophecy. Now, I hear the Lord say to you, Catherine, he said that he's going to bless you with a better house and, and even with more square footage and something really beautiful that is going to be such a blessing to you. And you watch and see how the Lord puts it all together for you. For He wants your family to be in a safe place and in a comfortable place for it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Catherine, I so appreciate you calling and telling me that. And you know what's funny is he he has too. He has because we were in a um, community, you know, and this is also a praise report to the Lord where we had a mess fire right across the house. Mm. And we were able to get into a bigger house. And so you were right on. Praise God. You know, we're, we are, I'm serious. Like, I, we were trying to get out of that place for so long. And God just opened the door and we're in a bigger house. I did not know that. And No. That's what I saw when I prayed for you. I saw you in a bigger house with better square footage, and it was safe for your family. Wow. Yes. Isn't God good? That's so funny because you have to just did that. Amen. Already. Praise the Lord. So. Wow. Yes. Well, God bless you, and God bless your listeners, and just don't give up. Amen. Thank you, Catherine, for calling me, and please call again. I love to hear those praise reports. Wow. I feel like traveling on. No, not really. I feel like staying right here and ministering to you. <laughs> you remember the old song? I feel like traveling on. I can't even sing that right now. Give me a different song. All right, let me take your call tonight. Some of you waiting for these lines to clear up and... I always want to take plenty of time with each caller. Hello, caller. What's your first name? Where are you calling from? This is Pete. How are you, David? Hey, Pete. We went from Oklahoma to Michigan, and uh, Sir. the snow has melted. We're ready to get spring going, aren't we? Yeah, we had a little snow yesterday, but it went right away. Now, Pete, did you hear that testimony? I did. Uh, you're not wearing a wedding band, are you? No, sir. Take it off. I believe God's going to give you somebody. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. That'd be all right. How old are you, Pete? You took me and my family out to dinner one night when we were in, in Michigan. Oh. I forgot. 26? I'm. Uh, thank you. Thank you. That's generous. Uh, add 11 to that. Oh, really? Wow. I'm young at heart. Okay, ladies, this is a Holy Ghost spirit filled young rich man. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Well, I'm calling those things which are not as though they are, Pete. That's right. <laughs> That's right. You know, Jan Crouch with uh, TBN, TBN, uh, Jan, Jan Crouch was real good to me. Her and Paul both were good to me, but I. Oh, yeah. But but Jan asked me when I was young. Back then. Yeah, she asked me when I was young. She asked me to, to host the dating game. I I was a youth pastor, the largest charismatic church in Orange County, California, in Anaheim, right across the street from Disneyland. And the call came in. She wanted me to take over the new dating game that they were going to start on TBN. And oh, I turned her down. I turned her down, Pete. You know, I was good looking and young and thin and no gray hair. And she called on me of all the handsome dudes in Southern California. I got the call and I turned her down. <laughs> well, God worked. God used you another way. He had another plan for me, but I don't want to get into the dating game here. But that's a phenomenal story. No, I don't either. <laughs> you don't either. <laughs> Nowadays. Well, wait a minute. God could give you a great, beautiful wife that loves Jesus and loves you, and he could. You're absolutely right. All right, what's on your mind tonight, Pete, besides whatever I'm throwing at you here? Well, 
you had some technical difficulties there, and all it was was Satan trying to get in the way. He was trying to shut you down and trying yeah. to use this pandemic and this everybody on the internet thing against you. And he he did not prevail. The Lord prevailed. So yes. I am happy about that. You're back on. Your face is is moving, not just sitting there. <laughs> and That's right. Even though you, even though sometimes we can't see you moving, we can still hear you. Good. Audio still comes through. And that's the power of radio. That's the power of audio, my friend. So Amen. On that. Amen. Yeah. Uh, and uh, my mom's just messaging me right now on Facebook. I was able to get a time for pickup order at Meyer tomorrow morning. Oh, good. You can get TP. Yeah, uh, we've had a TP crisis all over this area and everywhere. Has mm-hmm. a TP crisis for crying out loud. Yes, folks. Yeah, stop buying so much toilet paper. Fair square. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. Well, that's no, good. No, Mom's no, on the lookout for you. That's great. Yes, great. Yep. And I've been trying to get TP for her. I was able to get some other needed groceries for her. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to save a little bit of money here while uh, this whole thing's going down. I'm not going out like I used to. Yeah. And when I do, you know, I try to bless the uh, food workers and everybody else. And uh, That's good. You know, that's all I can say right now. We're just kind of hunkered down and being thankful for what we have right now. Yes, yes, I know. I think that this is going to be short-lived, brother. I, I think we're going to bounce back I, through it. I pray. Yeah. I pray and believe that it is short-lived. Amen. Amen. Well, help me spread the word both on Facebook and those that are there locally. Absolutely. We love Michigan. I sure will. I've been telling my Christian friends about you. I don't know how many, if any, have checked in, but uh, they'll do it in due time. Yes. It's, it's, you know? We're growing. And it, 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 yes, and it's great. Amen. I love how your studio looks. I, I think that looks awesome. Well, thank you. We're working on it. There are several things we have to make changes on, but I, I heard somebody told me, they said, don't wait till you get it all perfected. Get on right now and then perfect it along the way. And so I listened to that, and that's what we're doing. There are so many more perfections that need to happen, but the Lord will help us with it. Well, trial and error is the only way to get it to work right. When, you're, when you feel comfortable, then you're okay. Amen. Yes. When it's perfected, you won't even be there anymore. When the life is perfected, we won't even be here anymore. Just remember that. It's a work in progress, and we're still perfect. We're still being perfected. Yes, I'm so glad I stayed in touch with you, Pete, uh, while we were on the radio there in Lansing, Michigan. And, and you came out. You, you were one of the few people that we called that came out to our meeting there, from, from radio anyways. And, oh, we have such good meetings, good meetings. You know, I'm hoping and, and praying that maybe I could work for that radio station. I know the owner or the manager, and I've, you know, I put a bug in his ear. I haven't talked to him about it since, but uh, it'd be something really interesting. Yeah, well, that'd be good. And um, we are we are on our way to getting all of these programs edited together and distributed back down to the line of lots of radio stations that are that love our ministry, and there's a lot of them that do, and so. Yes, they do. Father, I pray for Pete right now, Lord, that you'll provide every need in his life and minister to him, bless him, Father. I thank you, Lord, for the ministry that he has to to encourage and to help others, Father. Send them into the lives of the right people, Father, in Jesus' name, and pour out your spirit upon him in Jesus' name. Pete, I love you. I appreciate you calling. I'm going to move things along. Call me again. Love you too, brother. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. It's your turn if you tried earlier. Come on, get in the room and let's talk together. 888. That that those calls blessed me. Did they bless you? I don't want to tell you the struggle that we're having. I I'm telling the Lord. And God is putting it upon somebody's heart to help us during this time and There are other people that are struggling too. There are other people that are doing just fine. Not everybody is struggling. Somebody asked me the other day, how could they give via Cash App? Maybe if Joanne's listening, you can put up all the the details there. And you can of course go to monthlypartners.com and sew. 
give into this ministry, be led by the Spirit. Father, I thank you that there will be people tonight that are led by the Spirit, and they'll obey you. Thank you for that one that's going to sow $1,000 into this ministry. Thank you for that one that will sow a $91 seed. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Give them a miracle financially in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. You tried earlier and couldn't get through. Now's the time to come on in. Come on in. The water's fine. You'll receive a blessing. I love praying with people. I love to take authority. 888-701-4483 for those listening by way of radio. If you're watching on social media, you've got the number in front of you. It takes a little bit to go through the system, but the system is set up in such a way that it will get you to our secret place, to our secret place studio that I've been working on, and it's all coming together. One of my producer friends in Hollywood, Los Angeles, called me today, and hope he's watching. We got some, got some things in the works, got some things in the making. It's going to be exciting. Sweep over my soul, sweep over my soul, sweet spirit, sweep over my soul, my rest, it's complete, while I stay kneeling at your feet sweet spirit sweep over my soul you remember it can you sing with me sweep over my soul sweep over my soul sweet spirit sweep over my soul my rest is complete while I stay at his feet sweet spirit sweep over my soul let me back up here and give you your scripture tonight where did i leave off i i'll have to find my place go ahead caller what's on your mind tonight praise the lord what a wonderful time we are having with jesus tonight joanne from lexington yes we are god is moving and i uh, i so appreciate one night i forgot the words of the song i looked down and you fed me the words of the song on text and you bailed me out You're going to spoil me, sis, like doing that stuff. That's all right. You deserve to be spoiled. <laughs> now, your husband, Jim, is, is on vacation this week, which has got to be a thrill uh, to know that you guys got some downtime and time to pray together and just, have you been on a walk? No, we, we've been too busy just catching up at the housework. He's standing right here listening to me. Good, good. Did you hear did you hear Catherine call about how I don't remember that, but I'm sure if she said it, it it's true. In Yuma, Arizona, I prophesied and said, get that ring off your finger. <laughs> and the Lord gave her a husband. Moved her to Oklahoma and gave her a beautiful home and a baby's on the way. Hey! I mean, don't get better than that. I'm trying to help her. Huh? <laughs> You keep that ring on, Joanne. That's all. <laughs> I don't blame her, though. I wore a ring for years when I was single. You what? I wore a, a ring for years when I was single. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, just for the one the Lord, that the Lord brings. The Lord knows every need that we have in our life, every personal thing we have going on. He knows all about it. And he loves us so much, he even ministers to us in the details, you know? 
Amen. That is that's absolutely true. You know, there's just a sweet spirit here, sweet presence, peaceful, loving, healing. And uh, I was chanting with Sheila and somebody else. I'm sorry, I don't remember which one. Sheila from Tennessee. None of us. Yes, I love her. She's wonderful. She but, she gets me excited when she testifies and preaches. Oh, I love hearing her. Yes, me too. She's listening. She's listening right now. I Good. Hi, Sheila. I bless you. And Matt. <laughs> her husband, Matt. Praise yes. the Lord. Sheila and Matt. Yep, wonderful couple. I hope Tammy tunes in tonight. And, and uh, God just, I think God just wants to comfort his people and say, be not afraid. Be not afraid. Be in faith. Be in peace. Yeah. Be in God's presence. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge. Amen. The key to that is dwelling in His presence. Uh huh. When we're dwelling in His presence, we have peace. Yes. But the enemy tries to pull us out of God's presence, and He tries to to disturb our peace. And that's what the enemy. That's the work of the enemy. That's how you know that doesn't come from God. That doesn't come from the hand of God. Oh, I, I, I'm stepping on toes. Yeah, praise God, hallelujah. But it's the truth. It's what the Word of God says. Uh-huh. The enemy is the author of confusion. That's and right. When it comes to disturb peace, that doesn't come from God. That will never come from God. Yes. The only thing that comes from God is conviction. And conviction always has a solution. Uh-huh. Condemnation never has a solution with it. It's always just down, 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 down. But conviction says, okay, yeah, that was wrong, but here's the solution. Repent and come back into right standing with God again. Yeah. Have your fellowship with God restored. And it only takes, what, 30 seconds if you're sincere and you mean it? My friend Nancy Harmon used to preach it, and she said condemnation beats you away and drives you away from God, but conviction gently pulls you towards the Holy Spirit. And I, I never forgot that when she said that. That blessed me. And that's so true. It is true. That blessed somebody tonight. They needed to hear that. Hallelujah. Amen. The Holy Spirit, just, he's loving on his children. He's loving on his people. Yeah. Well, and you know, and it's, it's condemnation. It's a thought that goes over and over and over in your head, and it just won't quit. It won't stop. Uh-huh. If you have brought it to the Lord, and you've repented, you've asked God to forgive you, and you've done it from your heart, and you had that moment, and you just knew that God washed it away, it's, it's, it's gone. It's gone. God doesn't even know what you're talking about. That's he right. Really doesn't. He really doesn't. It's gone. Yeah. It's removed as far as the east is from the west to be remembered no more. God literally forgets. He forgets it. So he really doesn't know. It's the enemy that tries to come in and replace God. That's come. That's not coming from God. Mm-hmm. That's not coming from God. That just helps somebody. So right. conviction brings you to God. And like David said, condemnation will drive you, push you away by thoughts, just the same thoughts going over and over in your mind. And what we do as believers, we cast those thoughts down. That's right. We cast it in the authority of Jesus Christ, and we throw them down under our feet and stomp all over them in the name of Jesus. Get out of my thoughts. Get out of my mind. Get Come out on. Of my out of my life, out of my spirit. Come on, Joanne. Here. Right. In the name of Jesus, the Holy Ghost dwells here. The Spirit of Truth dwells here. We have a mind of Christ in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. We have the mind of God in Christ Jesus. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's it. Jesus. Made us, it's made us to be the righteousness of God in Christ. I love that. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And dwelling in God's presence. That's the key. So you got to make time. you got to make time for God. If you want peace in your life, if you want God's presence in your life, you got to make time for him. That's what we're doing right here. We're making time. We're creating a space and time where we're saying, Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Come in. Have I, your way. I like, Joanne, what Tia said earlier tonight. She said that a wake-up call for her was when God said, I'm, you know, basically in my words, I'm not going to force you to draw nigh to me or love me. It's up to you, you know. I love that because God loves us so much. He wants us to have a choice. Angels don't get that choice. Nobody, he, he didn't give that choice to anybody else but mankind, human, human souls, human spirits. You know, we have a choice to love him. Mm-hmm. That's right, and that's the free will that God created for us. And that free will is what creates the potential for us to have a relationship 
for Jesus Christ. Otherwise, we'd be like little robots, you know, just doing what God. He, that, that, that's not what God wants. No, he doesn't love robots. That's right. I love it when you talk about how God wants a family. I'll, I'll, I'll never tire of you listening to you talk about it. God wants a big family. Mm-hmm. He wants a big family. That's all God ever wanted from the beginning was a family. Mm-hmm. He didn't want to take advantage of you. He didn't want to you know, hike off with your things or steal your goods. That's the lie that the devil tried to sell Adam and Eve. Did a pretty good job at it, too. All God wanted from the beginning was a family. And, you know, outside these two doors behind the camera, my whole house here and my children are running around. Of course, Mama keeps them contained most of the time. And and I know that when I'm done, you know, I've got a family. And, and we are the family of God. Uh, you're my sister. Jim's my brother. Uh, we are family together, the family of God. The, the Bible calls it the household of faith, not the household of fear, but the household of faith. Amen? Amen. Amen. Good yeah. word. Faith, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, and we're hearing God's word, and we're hearing right now God wants a family. He wants, he, he would that none should pay. He don't want anybody to go to hell. That's right. He just didn't want anybody to go to hell. That's why they, they paid the price. That's why God sent his son because he loved the world. That's why Jesus went through what he went through to purchase our healing, to purchase our salvation, but to enter into a relationship. You know, I heard someone ask me the other day, Honey, how often uh, do you pray throughout a day? And uh, I, re- I, I replied, I said, I pray all the time. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know what y'all are talking about, but I can see this every second of my life. If I try to step out and do something without Jesus, forget it. I wonder, I'm going to fail. I'm going to fall flat on my face. But if I was led by the Holy Spirit, everything I set my hand to is successful. The, the secret is being, well, how can I be led by the Holy Spirit? Got to spend time with them. Got to get in God's presence. Well, we've got so many resources available. All we got to do is just turn on preachers that we know that are anointed. Yeah. That when we. <laughs> The Holy Spirit's flowing through their words, and it's touching us. It's ministering to us. Just listen to those ministers. And then God, but what I found in my life is God kind of moved me around to different ministers that were blessing me. But I would come back, you know, here, David was, I can, I consider you my pastor. Or if I should say that, but we do. We consider you our pastor. A media pastor, I guess, huh? A media pastor. Yes, absolutely. What, what, what does David Wood say about this? And uh, <laughs> how many times? It's a confirmation to what the Lord's already telling us. It's like, well, there's your confirmation. Let's do it. Wow. It's that simple. Oh, yeah. But, uh, so, yes, sow that seed. Sow that seed. <laughs> sow it. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. It, it, more than ever. It changes uh, your life. I remember with me, uh, it shattered. it shattered the back of poverty in my life, never again to come totally changed everything, the way I thought, the way I looked at things, the way I received in the future, everything changed in my life when I sowed that thousand dollars. Somebody will obey the Lord. I, I really sensed that today when I was praying. And then my wife was, I don't know, she was taking laundry in a basket or something. I grabbed her. I said, grab my hand, let's pray. And she's so good at this all the time to come in agreement with me. I need, I, sometimes I just need a second person to agree with me. And so we prayed right on the spot. And, and I said, thank you, Jesus. Somebody's going to sow that thousand dollar seed on, on, uh, monthlypartners.com. And they're going to sow it with great expectation of what God is getting ready to, I hear the Lord say a recalibration and a refocusing of things for this nation that as we go into 2020, that there's a recalibration and a refocusing coming to our government, to our standards of living, to our nation in general. There's a, I, 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 I really, I'd like to look this word up because I heard this recalibration and refocusing in our nation. And I sense especially somebody's going to sow a seed of recalibration. Everything in their life is going to be recalibrated and getting on the rhythm of faith, God's rhythm of faith. Oh, I'm getting excited, Joanne, when I talk about this. I, I feel the spirit of the Lord on this. I, I, I don't even really know what I'm saying other than I'm saying it as an unction of the spirit right now. There's a recalibration and a refocusing coming upon people in the name of Jesus. Praise God. I feel like someone has sown. I feel like someone just sown 
a minute ago. They they released that seed, and uh, it is so powerful. There's been many times that my husband and I have sown in the face of fear, and when we sowed, it broke the back of fear. Yes. It broke the back of fear. Absolutely. And, and, and that uh, spirit, he tries to intimidate, and it just, it, it pushed it back. And what happened was... Um, it, it was like doors swung open. Mm-hmm. We just stepped into another dimension of wow. praise of the Lord. But it required that we had to stand up in the face of fear. And so we're not going to bow. You know, I, I just got through my spirit. One way you can say, I'm not going to bow to the idol of fear. That's it's right. Like a chat back in a bendigo. Yeah. What was fear? They said, so throw us in, king. We'll not bow. And they threw him in, and they, when the king looked in the furnace, he said, turn it up. Turn the heat up. Yeah. <laughs> he must have really hated these people. And, yeah. and when he looked in, ah, there's a fourth man liking unto the Son of God, dancing and praising the Lord right in the fire. Hey! And that's the way it is. That's the way people are going to find themselves. They may be in the fire, but there's a fourth man. There is a fourth man. Praise God. And so they didn't bow to fear, and they got thrown in the fire because they didn't bow to fear. That's right. The fire, the fire burns up all the impurities. It burns up all the trash. Yes. It makes more room in our life. It takes us to a, a new level, a new dimension in God, where we can walk in greater faith, and we can see greater results to our prayers. When we pray, um, the answers come quick, more quickly. When we refuse to bow to fear. Yeah. And so one way we can do right now is by saying, "I'm not going to listen to the voice of fear." But I'm going to listen to the voice of faith, and I'm moving faith. And faith requires action, because faith without work is dead. So what can you do right now? What's your action? If you don't have any money to sell, your action is you can pray. And, David, you have a way that people can give. Like, you, you tell them, come up and touch the bucket. I don't know how we can touch the bucket. Maybe touch your phone and the Internet and declare that I'll have $100 by the end of the week to sell into David's Woods Ministry with surplus to go buy groceries. You know, Act on your faith. Declare. Speak out of your mouth. You watched that. You watched it in some of our services. Yeah. And what you're saying is I, I teach people, even if you don't have anything to give in a service, come touch the bucket in faith. Don't just sit there and watch everybody else and feel sorry for yourself. Right. Get up. Freak the devil out. I mean, the devil makes people broke, and then he, he laughs at them when they don't have nothing to give. And so they sit yeah. there. And, and But when you move towards that offering bucket, I know in my heart, Joanne, it panics the devil he's saying what are they doing hey i thought i made them broke Uh uh-uh i ain't broke in jesus name i'm headed to that offering bucket and i'm if i go touch the bucket and give god praise that's enough and then i've watched god turn around and bless other people and you that's what you're talking about you've seen that in our services i don't know kentucky or georgia or wherever it was that you saw it a few places but um there was one time i lost my purse in the car and uh, so I knew I had it to give. I just didn't have it on me. I said, you know what? I'm going to go touch the bucket because I don't want to touch. I want to do something in this moment. I want to do an act of faith. And God, so, so a miracle came out of that. I don't remember what it was. But, but by me going up and touching the bucket, even though I saw purses in the car, but by me, maybe, I don't know, maybe that was, maybe that's when the $100 bills began to multiply in my purse. But after I touched the bucket, maybe that's what it was. Uh, Let's back up, Joanne, and let's explain to people because Sheila has never heard this story, and others have never. Sabrina, I don't think, has heard this. Maybe Sabrina's heard me talk about it. But you asked the Lord to have angels come, and you've got a special zipper in the, I don't know, inside or outside of your purse. I don't know where it is. But you asked the Lord to bring an angel, an angel of the Lord, and to put miracle money inside the zipper. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, um, I have seen uh, 20s multiply in my purse, and um, as we were going higher in the things of God and in prosperity, just like God rained manna down in the desert, that was a supernatural manifestation that they, that became tangible, yes. they could touch with their hands, and they actually were able to partake of that. And the word manna means, what is it? Yeah. That's what it means. What is it? <laughs> that's right. That's right. What just happened? Um, so, you know, I was thinking about this, and the first time 
I wanted to put me off, and I, I only had one $20 bill. I paid all the bills. I, I paid my tithe. I had enough for Jim not to go out with the pastor and his wife of the church and possibly use some. And we would, we would have no money, no money for the rest of the week. Zero. And uh, we, we, our gas tanks were full, so we had enough money to get, and we had food, pack our lunch. And so um, I had one $20 bill, and I said, well, we're, you know, I always told my husband, he said, we can't afford to go out to eat. And I looked at him, I said, we can't afford not to. Now, this and is said, years oh. ago. This is years ago. Years. Because we, we don't we're say. We're not going to bow to fear. Yeah. yeah. We're not going to bow to fear. We're not going to bow to the voice of poverty. That's not welcome in our home. Yes. This is a part of poverty. We Amen. Don't the voice of sickness. We don't listen to symptoms. We say, no, you're a lying symptom. you got to get out and go. In the name Come of on. Jesus. That's right. And you and Angela are listening, too. And uh, so I was just moving in faith like I always did. And uh, I held my purse up. And I'd already put 20 in, but I really wanted another 20. And I held my purse up to my chest. I said, oh, God, I wish there was another $20 bill in my purse to put in that offering plate. I just really want to do it today. And I opened my purse, and I said, okay, I need to double check before we go to see how much we have. And lo and behold, did I not have one 20, but I had two $20 bills in my purse. That was the first time. Wow. A dollar bill. You know, wow. For money manifested. That was the first time. That is a manifestation. So. That increased my faith when that happened to believe for more, mm-hmm. for greater. And so it took a while. I got to meditating about this. And uh, our paths crossed. And when our paths, pa- uh, paths crossed, I like the way you said it, uh, Jim and I went from prosperity into abundance, into multiplication. We stepped into a whole new realm when we began to sow into your ministry. Because you had that greater level of faith operating in your life. We weren't there yet. And, uh, uh, and you're still stretching us, and I love it. I love to be stretched because that means your faith is growing. And so uh, we went to, you were in Louisville preaching, and I was in the parking lot. I held my purse up to my chest before I went in, and I said, God, I know I've got this amount, but I would really like $300 to put in David with hands tonight. I'd really like $300. And I just held my chest up, and I just really want that. Um, and I knew it would be a huge blessing to y'all. I just wanted it for you. I don't know how else to explain it. And after church, I looked at my purse and I counted. $300 bill had multiplied in my purse during the worship service. Wow. So after worship, um, God said, look in your purse and count. So I looked at my purse and counted, and there was there was extra money in there. And uh, after church, I put it in your hands and said, God multiplied this in my purse, and I sowed it. God will give seed for the sower, and he watches over his words. Performance. So this is true. He gives seed to the sower, and then the, the scripture says, and then bread for the eater. So he gives it in that order. And I remember when you handed me that, it was so crisp and new and fresh, almost like it was hot off the press. <laughs> three well, three $100 bills. You, you prayed, the angel of the Lord put it in your purse. He didn't have it in there before. Is it possible that you could have overlooked it? No, no, no. And, and on, I make sure because I have to budget. I got to stay on budget. Yeah. Go to that. That goes to that. That goes to that. That's good stewardship. What a mighty God. Good stewardship over our What a mighty God. Not too long after my daddy. My daddy had gone to heaven uh, not too long before this happened. Yeah. So I was still grieving over that. But it don't matter what your circumstance or situation is. I miss him to this day. I can't wait to get to heaven and see him again. I've almost made it a few times here, but God says, no, you got more work to do, so I'm still here. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's right. I feel, even, even in time of sorrow, even when my heart was uh, broken, and day during that service, I was caught up into heaven in that service, and I actually did get to see my dad. In that church. I never told you that. I'm sorry. I forgot. Hmm. I got him to <laughs> wow. During that service. And, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if that was the moment when the money multiplied in my purse. You know, and God is going to say, look, he's okay. And you know what they do in heaven? They laugh. They laugh a lot in heaven. The joy of the Lord. Oh, yeah. I, I, had, I had a dream of Jesus and Daddy walking together. I'm just laughing. Yeah, they laugh more in heaven than on earth. There's no doubt in my mind. I, I've experienced that. I Absolutely true. Absolutely true. And it's almost like they were reminiscing, you know. Remember that time I delivered you? Remember that time I healed you? Remember that time I, yeah, that was good. And they just laughed. 
just laughs, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, so the joy of the Lord is our strength. Hallelujah. Yeah. But living that, that's what I'm talking about, living that dimension. We're not afraid. Yeah. We're not, we're not sitting here fearful. We're not locked away in our trembling in our house. That's yeah, right. We're just doing what we, what we always do. We're living the way we always live. Yeah. We're changing our routine. We're not doing anything different. Uh, we're, we're just doing what we always do, going about our daily business, trusting God. Right. You know, when I stop and think about it sometimes, it just it amazes me all that God's done for you. Who are we? You know, we don't deserve it any more than anybody else does. But the blood of Jesus makes us worthy. So this is for everybody. This yeah. is for me and Jim. This isn't just for David and Angela. This is Sheila. She sings a manifestation. This is for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord. This is for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord. Make Jesus your Lord. Make him a, and it, it, it's a journey. It's a journey. It didn't just happen. You know, a lot of times for me, and she was like baby steps, you know. You just... You move out and say, okay, so that works. So you do it more, and you, and God will teach you. The Holy Spirit, he will guide you. He will lead you. Yeah. He will lead you in all truth and understanding. And you'll see these things manifest in your life more and more. This is this is, re- this is more real than than the, the temporal world that's passing away. And we're laying up treasures in heaven that are going to last forever. That's we're right. Have many pe- we're, I believe we're going to have many people in heaven. And we say, thank you for giving. Thank you for sowing. I'm in heaven. I didn't go to hell. I heard the gospel because you sowed into a ministry that was preaching the truth. Yeah, that's true. I appreciate that. And, and you know, I was thinking while you were talking, Sheila needed a fan belt, and the angel of the Lord gave her a fan belt miraculously. You needed $300 in your purse to sew. It was a desire of your heart, and the Lord gave it to you miraculously. I mean, what is it that the Lord has that he that he doesn't have? He has everything. He has everything that he can supply, whether it's miracle money in the purse or a fan belt in the trunk. He he knows how to get it to you. Um, I hear Jim shouting amen in the back there. Can you, Joanne, would you join would you join your faith with Jim and 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 yourself and me? Would you pray for that one that's watching on or that one that's listening by radio and there's somebody today that they're down to their last dollar and they're down to their very last. They don't know how they're going to make it. Can we join? Can we stretch our faith across this enormously large prayer altar bench called radio and, and now video? Can we stretch our faith out there for somebody that needs a financial miracle? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, I will. Um, there, was a, there was a time when my husband and I, we were down to our last dollars. We took half of what was in the bank and we sold it. We didn't know how we we're going to pay the rent. We, we thought we were going to be living in our car. And we said, you know what? Mm-hmm. Uh, the devil ain't going to get all of us. That's right. If, if, if this is how it's going to be, we're going to take half of what's left in the bank and we're going to sow it as a seed into a ministry. It was a godly ministry that we supported at that time. And um, before the date was over, the situation turned around. We came home, and God just called Jim's boss. He, uh, he doesn't know. The dispatcher doesn't know about this. So I, I obeyed the Lord, and I called his boss. She didn't know, just as the Lord had told me. And uh, I handed the phone to Jim, and Jim was talking to her. And before the sun set, his hours went back up to 40 hours where they had been reduced to 20. That was a hard time. We didn't, we didn't know. It was very uncertain. We didn't know how what was going to happen. We took half of what was left. We wow. Did. And if God did it for us, he'll do it for all of his children. He's That's no right. He's not a special person. God doesn't play favor. He, if you ask and believe, you will receive. And Lord Jesus, right now, I just link my faith yes, with, Lord. with you, with those that are listening right now, and we reach out to faith by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, Jesus. To those that are looking at uncertain times and they're they're sharing an uncertain time. Yes, Lord. And we just pray in the name of Jesus that a holy boldness would rise up inside of them. And they know well, they would not cower to the to the voice of fear, to the idol of fear. That they won't bow. They won't worship at the idol of fear. They won't be intimidated by the idol of fear. But they will listen to the voice of faith. They will listen to the Holy Spirit. They will yield to the voice of God. To the voice that will bring blessing 
and prosperity in their life that will create supernatural provision in a time of need in the mighty name of Jesus right now. I yes. release my faith into your life. Yes, in Jesus', in Jesus name. name. I release the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, to move mightily and powerfully in your life yes, in the Lord. name of Jesus. Yes, yes. To knock those idols over. Yes, Lord. To, to cut them down in the name of Jesus. Jesus and things name. would arise in your spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Yes. And you would take what was in your hand, and whatever God tells you to do with it, you do it. Yes, whatever Lord. amount He tells you to sow, you sow it. You put your trust in God, you put your faith in God. Don't trust in your money. Yes. What good is your money going to do you if you're laying on a sick bed? Didn't do my husband no good. He almost died last year. But faith in Jesus Christ, faith in the healing power of the Holy Ghost, linking with our brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, healed my husband, made him whole. We stood on the Word of God. We've always stood with Jesus. And in a time of need, we had a sure foundation that we could stand on and trust God to bring us through. Yes. And we are doing that right now in this season. In Jesus. We're doing what we've always done. We're putting our foot down. We're looking to heaven. Our faith is strong. And we say in the mighty name of Jesus, yes. we will not bow to the That's right. fear. But we worship That's right. in the household of faith. We agree. In Jesus Christ, we will not be afraid. We move in faith. We move in love. We move in hope. We move in peace. We are led by the Holy Spirit. We obey the voice of the Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. What God tells us to do, we do it. And we don't doubt. We believe that God will supply all of yes. us according to His riches and glory. Right. Yes, Father. We are boundless. They are endless. Yes, this Jesus. Will end to the riches and supplies of our Father in heaven. He's not worried about this situation. That's right. He knew about it thousands of years ago at the foundations of the earth before it ever happened. And God oh, yes, will Lord. go forth. God's kingdom will go forth in the earth, in the land. Yes. In the name of Jesus. People will continue to be saved. People will continue to be healed. The gospel will continue to be preached. And go forth. Yes, yes. Until we are calmly in the rapture. In the mighty name oh. of Jesus, I declare it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Father. Joanne, don't go anywhere. Stay right there with me. Somebody's watching right now. They need to hear this. When I first began to walk with the Lord, I did not trust Him fully. How He longed for me to understand that I could. Wow. So, through the valley, He led me. Mm, remember when? Afraid as I could be until I felt his loving arms embrace me. Just like Catherine, just like Tia, just like you. How could I ever doubt my God whose hands hold the universe? <laughs> no way. Why could I ever question his abilities? There's no place that I could go where he doesn't, he doesn't already. The things that trouble me. Oh, he's always aware, Tony, of where I am and where I need to be. I've been through enough to 
no hill be enough for me. Jim and Joanne, you know, he's come through too many times. That's put my mind at ease. When you're sitting there missing your fingers from the lawnmower, sitting in the ER, I'll take my very life. He's going to take good care of me. Uh, some of you got some praising to do. I've been through enough to know he'll be enough for me. Oh, yes. Remember the time when you were sitting in the ER and you felt like all your world was falling apart? Remember when you lost your job or your husband and your wife and you felt like it had all gone? How could I ever doubt my God whose hands hold the universe? Why would I ever question your ability, oh God? I've been through enough to know you be enough for me, just like Sheila, just like Tia, just like Catherine. He's come through too many times. That puts my mind at ease. I know you're not supposed to be crying as a man, but God's so good to me. I'll stake my very life. He gonna take good care of you right there in your living room right there in your car right there wherever you are because I've been through enough to know he'll he'll be enough for you maybe the doctor gave you a, a brutal report and you don't want to tell anybody I've been through enough to know God is my healer. Jesus, I lift up that one that's at the end of their rope that doesn't know exactly what they're going to do or how they're going to make it. God, we've been through so much. Excuse me for getting emotional, but that's the kind of God I serve. I feel the Holy Ghost in here, Joanne. I feel the Spirit of God. I feel him moving for somebody. Robin Smith, when you thought you are going to lose your house, the Holy Spirit came down and delivered you after we prayed for you. Sheila, when you didn't know how you are going to make it, the Holy Ghost broke in on time. I feel the fire of God in this place tonight. When I first began to walk, do you remember when you first began to walk with the Lord? <laughs> You're just a baby, you know, you didn't know how to fully trust him. And how God longs for us to understand him. It seems like there's universes apart between our human brain and the way God thinks, but thank God for Jesus. He, he came to me. He comes to you tonight. When I first began to walk with the Lord, I did not fully trust him. Can I just sing unto the Lord tonight? How he longed for me to us. Understand. Wanted to make sure I could trust him. It's still what he's wanting. So through the valley, he led me 
He's leading you right now. Afraid as we could be until I felt until I felt God's loving arms wrapped around me. Some of you got so much to thank God for. I've been through enough to know he'll be enough for me. He comes through too many times. That puts my mind at ease when I don't have a meeting, when I don't have an offering, when I don't have income. I'll stake my very life. He's gonna take, take real good care of you and me. I've been through enough to know he'll be enough for me. Oh, yes, Lord. You're holding the universe right now. Let us trust you, Lord. May we never put our trust in man. May we never put our trust in human economies. May we always trust the Lord. Lean not on your own understanding and all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. When you feel like God is mad at you, he's not mad at you. He's not mad at you. He's not mad at you. God is love. God loves you. I know it's hard to get into your mind, but God loves you tonight, sir. God loves you tonight, ma'am. Just the way you are with all your brokenness, with all your shortcomings, with all your lacks, with all your disobedience. He loves you tonight. The love of God is so great. And you've been through so much. Don't let another day go by where the devil torments your mind. Don't let another time come where he needles in on your spirit, but turn it over to the Lord Jesus. Oh, Jesus, I thank you for your spirit. Joanne, there are people that are watching and listening that are getting blessed tonight. I, I'm not the greatest singer in the world, but... You know, I used to be a really good singer when I was younger, but as you get older, your voice changes. But I, I'm not singing to people anymore. I used to sing to people. Now I sing to the Lord. And as I sing to the Lord, I just sense people are touched. And isn't it true that you and Jim have been through so much, and, and now you know that he walks with you, he talks with you, he, you know that he's right there by your side, that everything's going to work out okay? It's a comfort, isn't it? Just a beautiful comfort to know. But the Lord's right there next to us. Mm -hmm. It is. It's a beautiful comfort. It doesn't matter what we're facing. Yeah. To know that Jesus walks with us through every valley. Every valley. Through every storm. We can trust him. Yes. He's trustworthy. Joanne, I appreciate your call. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna take Bless some more of the calls. I want you to call me towards the end of the program again before we go off tonight. Father, I just come to you right now. I thank you for Jim and Joanne. What a testimony they have. Somebody needs to call me right now. Your, your back is against the wall. You're not sure how you're going to make it out. You're not sure what to do. You, you need a miracle, and I want to pray with you tonight. Come on, go to your telephone right now. Make that call. Let me pray with you. That's what this program is about. That's what it... Many of you, I've been doing this a long time on radio. Many of you are just now catching up to speed with what I what I do. We've logged hundreds and hundreds. I think Joanne's taken 1,500 calls in a year. We looked, Joanne, the other night, and we had 36 calls just on Facebook alone that couldn't get through. I've got to add more phone lines. Father, I pray for that one that doesn't know what they're going to do, doesn't know their next move. 
The pressure seems to be mounting on every side. Father, you're so good to your children. I pray right now. Yes, Candy, I plead the blood of Jesus over you working in that hospital. I pray right now that the presence of the Lord, no sickness can come nigh you. You, you have the immunity of the blood of Jesus all over you in the name of Je in the name of Jesus. Touch her, Lord. No exposure. No exposure. Strength right now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost coming over Candy right now. I think, Candy, you're in Spokane, Washington. I'm not sure. You might have moved. Right now, wherever you are, God, God's healing power is sheltering you like you're walking in a bubble like you're walking in a bubble, totally protected from every germ, every virus, every disease, in the name of Jesus. I pray for that one that doesn't know how to pay their bills, Lord, give them peace. Give them peace of mind right now. Thank you, Lord, for Scott, Lord. He's not alone, he's not by himself. God, you're right there with him. You're right there with him. Dispatch angels, I pray. Loose the presence of the Holy Ghost right now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Tonight, I've been watching the calls that goes up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down all through the night. And and I just want to take your call. I, I, I realize lots of people, like a stream, people jump in, people jump out. We started with 18 watchers. We went to 13, then to 9, then to 9, then to 12, then to 10, then to 9, then to 10, then to 9, bouncing all over. Yes, Candy, you're in Richland, Washington. You're a southerner now. <laughs> I'll be preaching in the Tri-Cities this August. Love to see you. Angel and I would love to both see you. You're a nurse. Praise the Lord. Beautiful. I want to take your call tonight. I feel like that there's still some more people to be praying praying for. There's, you, you need to know, those of you just joining us, yes, this is on the radio, but it's also on your Facebook, your Periscope, your YouTube, and the anointing is available here to, to lay hands. And there are other people all over the United States praying with me, believing with me, to pray the prayer of faith. Yes, Scott, I take authority over that anxiety and depression. I rebuke it from off of you in the name of Loose him now and let him go in Jesus' name. You go, you go for my brother in the name of Jesus. Oh, I thank you, Father, for healing Scott right there in Alabama. Oh, Jesus, pour your spirit out upon him right now. Yes, Lord, no more bondage, no more fear, no more anxious thoughts. I cover your mind. Lord, take the paintbrush of heaven and cover his mind with Calvary's blood. Wipe away the stains of yesterday's pain. There it goes, there it goes, there it goes, there it goes, there it goes. Throw your hands up, Scott. Start praising the Lord. Start thanking the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That's it. Say thank you, Lord, for taking all anxious thoughts away from me. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Release him from that, Lord. There it goes. Nothing like the power of the Holy Ghost. Nothing like a fresh anointing, Scott. Receive a double portion. Receive the double portion. Receive a fresh anointing. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Hey, glory to God. Scott, I got a scripture for you. Job 23.10. When he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. Where is that? Job 23, verse 10. You're coming forth as gold. Yes, Robin, in a terrible car accident, you're a drummer and you can't use your arms, just like the devil, to try to stop you from 
Joanne, if you and Jim ever come out to my house on at our Holy Ghost Christmas party, I can't. I want you to meet Robin Smith, one of the most tremendous anointed drummers you'll ever hear. And here he got crashed up, banged up. You remember Lowell Lundstrom? He played the drums for Lowell Lundstrom. I sent you Nancy Harmon's music there at PTL. He played the drum. He's a great drummer. Father, I pray right now, we agree, we agree together that you touch his arms, heal his arms right now. All healing through the bone, through the muscle, through the tissue, through the ligaments. Lord, through his skin, Lord, that he'll use his arms more freely than ever before, just like it never happened. Let him play those drums unto you, Lord, and what a testimony it'll be. In the name of Jesus, we command that pain to go. We command those hands and the swelling to go. Lord, all through his hands, let that swelling go in Jesus' name. Time Time by itself is not a healer, for if time by itself would heal, God would be unnecessary. God is necessary to heal, but there is a process of time, part of healing. Isaiah 40, verse 31, Robin. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and never faint. And play the drums like never before. Well, that's David Wood's paraphrase. Mm-hmm. I'm believing with you, brother. Down at the bottom of the hour of our second hour, I want to take your call tonight. Lots of good calls tonight. Lots of great calls. And yes, healing is flowing in Jesus' name. That's right, Joanne. Oh, I thank God for Jim and Joanne, my intercessors, my partners. See there, Robin? There's people praying for you. Who would have known on Facebook, Periscope, and YouTube? Hallelujah. Can't keep it to myself, that old song. And, uh, well, let me hear from you tonight. Let me hear what's on your mind. And uh, I got a little emotional and caught up earlier, but but it's okay. I can handle it. Uh, yeah, I'm feeling a lot better, Scott says. And, and I'm believing, Robin, you're going to be feeling a lot better too. Amen? Amen. I'm touching Jesus tonight. I feel Jesus in this place. And I'm touching the Lord for you. Thank you, Father, flowing over Robin. Thank you, Father, for flowing over Vicki in North Carolina, Robin in Portland, Oregon, and Sabrina in Washington State, and Scott in Alabama, Tia in Washington State. Oh, God, thank you for giving them a miracle. Kim, I've been praying over your son. Every demon power that's hypnotized him or come against him. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke. I rebuke that controlling spirit from off of him. I cut it off. I cut it off. I cut it off in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, bring a miracle. Bring deliverance to her son. Thank you, Father. Uh-huh. I hear the Lord say God's going to charge and drive out every feeling of loneliness in his heart. Every feeling of loneliness in his heart. Lord, we're touching you tonight. We're touching Jesus tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody praise him. Somebody show me some hearts tonight. Somebody give me some shout-outs and hallelujahs and glory to God and praise the Lord. I'm praising him tonight. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. This is the victory that you have. 
You've got great victory tonight. In the name of Jesus, God's given you great victory. I declare great victory over you. I declare this is a new season of calibration. Oh, my Lord, I've never heard that. A refocusing is coming to you. Even a refocusing in our nation and a recalibration to our nation. Father, I speak finances to my brother. I speak finances to my sister. I command the finances to be released. It'll not be held back in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Somebody's battling something in the courts, and God's going to give you relief. He's going to give you freedom. Makes me happy. Oh, yes. Stacy, now would be a good time to call. I wanted to hear your, you, I saw just briefly you had a testimony. Call me, Stacy. I want to hear. God's doing something in your life. Tia, thank you for sharing with me. Even though I'm not your cup of tea. <laughs> oh, Jesus, touch Nathan. Touch him right now. Touch that sore throat. Touch that esophagus. Lord, that the surgery would be totally canceled in the name of Jesus. I bind up the devil from off of him. I command you to loose that boy. You loose him and let him go in Jesus' name. God, give him a miracle. Come on, partners, pray. Nathan needs a miracle right down there in Georgia. In the name of Jesus, Father, m make a, a melody in his heart and put a new touch, oh God, upon him in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord, glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. All right, phone lines are clear, and I'm, I'm here to talk to you. I'm here to hear you. <laughs> glory to your name. Glory to that precious name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Mm. Waiting for your call. So many people called me tonight. This is what it's really supposed to be about. One night we had we had a pimp in his Mercedes in Las Vegas listening on KNLB. And uh, some one of the relatives up in Seattle said he was sitting there crying in his car, sitting outside the casino with tears coming down his face. Remember that, Joanne? Hmm. Candy, I'll be uh, speaking at the convention center for a weekend. I'm not sure what weekend it is in August. But I'll be at the convention center there. I'm sure it has a name. I just don't know the name of it. I'll be speaking to lots of pastors, but you're welcome to come. What a night, what a night this has been. 25 minutes after the hour. What am I doing? I'm waiting for you, waiting for your call, waiting for you to get the boldness to call in, to talk together. They say radio is the theater of the mind. There's not much theater here. You can see what's going on, but but radio is the theater of the mind. You have to really kind of imagine what the guy looks like and <laughs> where he's sitting. And I suppose Facebook here takes all that out. No more theater of the mind when you're on Facebook. If you're listening by radio, uh, you can subscribe to us on YouTube. If, you, if you're watching right now and you haven't subscribed to us on YouTube, it really helps us build what we're building. I'm, I'm believing God for a thousand subscribers. I think we're at 128. 
which isn't much, but when you consider we started 30 days ago, pretty good. If you haven't made us a friend on Facebook or liked us on Twitter, or I don't know what you do with us on Twitter, I'm not sure, but we're there. You can be watching us on Twitter. I'd love to hear from you tonight. The number to call if you're listening by radio is 888-701-4483. When you get into the secret place, when you get into the call center, you can hit the extension 802, and it'll bring you right here, and and we can talk, and we can pray, and there's something special about praying together with the man of God, and I've asked God to give me partners. I've asked him to give me a word for you, and uh, he's been doing that all night long. Jesus, I thank you for that one that's going to go online. Maybe they don't have $1,000 to sow, but they could give the $91 seed using their bank card at monthlypartners.com. Jesus, I pray that you'll cause that to happen in their life, Father, that you'll bring it to them in Jesus' name. Even if they just called to pledge it, we would pray over that. Praise God. Went to the river and I've been baptized. Have you been baptized? Felt the fire touch me and I'm satisfied. Just like the Bible. Just like the Bible. Just like the Bible says. You know, when I set up my tent, I don't know when I'll be able to set the tent up again with all this going on, but when I set my tent up and I walk underneath the tent towards the back of the platform, I... I feel like the drapery of fire come over my shoulders. And I'm feeling that tonight. I'm feeling that tonight. I felt so many people touched tonight. Man, I can't wait to look and see how many calls were logged tonight and how many people called for prayer. Whoa. Wow, 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 wow. Yes. In the name of Jesus, Joanne, that's right. Multiply the seed sown. Increase it. May fear go from your heart. Faith come. Faith comes. Faith comes. In the name of Jesus, faith comes. Ha! Thank you, Lord. My, 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 my. Sheila, I didn't pull a scripture for you. That's right. Here it is. Romans 5, 1, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God. You are justified by his blood through faith. Pastor David, glory to God for you. 2 Corinthians 12, 9, my grace is sufficient for you. Most of you know these already. Good to hear the word, though. I love you, Pastor David. Liana from Minneapolis. John 10, 27 and 28, my sheep recognize my voice. They will follow me and I give them eternal life. Ooh, that's a good one. What a night this has been. Been with you over two hours and the spirit of God has fallen. Caller after caller, anointed after anointing, just, just like dew drops of fire from heaven. I don't know how else to explain it. It's just come down upon us tonight. What do you think about Jesus? We should be asking people today, are you thinking about Jesus? That's who, that's who you should be thinking about. Hallelujah, glory. Old Shambach said, I met Shambach twice, R.W. Shambach. What a great man. Boy, do we miss him. I'd love to hear him put the mash down on this infirmity. <laughs> he said one time, he said that he was went in to make a hospital call, pray for somebody. And when he went in to pray for somebody, he said that uh, the man, as uh, the man told him, you know, God totally healed him. He said that, he said that the, uh, a man in, dressed in black with a white collar stepped in the room and did his little hamana, hamana, hamana out of his book. And he said when he walked out, a man in a white robe walked through the other window 
And the man in the right robe said to him, to the, to the man that this R.W. Shambach is ministering to, said, you don't have any problems. All you need is faith in God. And R.W. Shambach said that's where he got that. Hi, caller. What's on your mind tonight? Hey, Brother Woods. This is Stacy from Owensboro, Kentucky. Hey, Stacy. Praise the Lord. Have you been with me the whole night or just snuck in here at the end? Uh, just a few hours in between doing my homework for, for college and listening to you at the same time. Amen. Amen. So what are you majoring in? A uh, social worker. Oh, good for you. That's that's uh, a... Yes, I particularly want to be a, uh, a counselor, and um, I want to counsel, like, for nonprofits. Uh, really want to help, like, the homeless. You know what a social worker is in, in code? It's in code, it means minister. <laughs> I did not know that. No, no, no. I'm just making that up. I, 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 actually, I guess that's the truth. You're a minister. You're going to be a minister as an, in the guise of social worker. Because it really is. You get a chance to, to minister to people in their hurts and their needs. And are you doing okay. are you doing school online then? Uh, yes, everything is online now. So it's been a little bit uh, challenging. Yeah, my daughter, you know, is taking psychology at Liberty University, and she's she's on that computer all the time working away. And so this is new for you? You normally go into classes, but now you've switched everything up? Well, I have been out of college for over 20 years. Oh. And um, this is, yes, and this is my first time ever doing classes online. So wow. it's been a little bit stressful. Yeah, yeah. So we need to pray that God just give you peace and and bring order to all the things you need order brought to, right? Amen. You yes. you were in my meetings there in 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 Owensboro, right? Yeah. Yeah, and God moves awesome in in Owensboro. The people of Owensboro are very unique people. They there's such a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? There's a hospitality gift. That is among the people of Owensboro, Kentucky, towards the ministers of the gospel. And every time I go through there, it's always just a relief. You know, you come out of the danger zones and you you work the mission field of the United States. And pretty soon, you the next thing you know, you're coming to Owensboro and you just take a sigh of relief, you know. Uh, yes, um, I have noticed with, um, right now I work at a women's homeless shelter I work through AmeriCorps, so I serve at the homeless shelter. And uh, I tell you, we've been kind of on the front lines as well, um, you know, working with the homeless people. And um, anyhow, it, it's been really stressful, but it's also been very humbling. Um, just the community here in Owensboro, everybody coming together and just supporting us, um, supplying us with what we need. It's just incredible. Yeah. Praise God. Well, now, you still have your job there, right? Or or you, what did they do? They kind of terminated everybody for temporarily, or how did that work? Uh, no, actually, we're still, we're still working. <laughs> oh, good. So, Praise the Lord. It's, Absolutely. So we're probably one of the few places that, you know, haven't gotten hit uh, really hard with uh, being unemployed. So I'm really blessed for that. But at the same time, sometimes it's, it's a bit stressful. But, um, you know, I have to just remain uh, in faith and, and not, you know, not worry so much that I'm going to catch this virus. Yes, yes, yes. And we're not going to catch it in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Tia, did you hear Tia's call in Washington State? She's a caregiver. Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. And amazing, you're clear across the United States and you're hearing each other. And, and I know that the Lord will keep Tia safe in her caregiving and the Lord will keep you safe working there in the with the ladies among the homeless shelter. I totally agree. I wanted to kind of um, share with you the reason. 
Hello. Mm, we lost your connection. Her phone went dead. Walk around, Seth. Walk around. I still got you on the line. All right. Can there you hear you. me? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay. I wanted to share with you a dream I had a couple years ago. Yes. Okay. It was, uh, it was about me going into a room. It was a couple of people that were going to bring me into a room. And um, in this room, I really didn't see anybody in there. But I was being brought in there to speak. Hmm. And uh, I couldn't speak. It was like my mouth was full. Mm -hmm. And so they, they took me out of the room. We tried it again. I go back into the room probably about three times. And like the third time... I was just, just about getting ready to speak, but I wasn't quite there yet. And I wondered what that meant, and I really feel like the Lord was saying, it's almost time, but not quite yet. And uh, anyways, I woke up from the dream, and I caught myself talking in my sleep, and I, I was crying, but I was crying happily. And I'm so excited, Lord. I am so excited to serve you. And um, I remember seeing, I remember seeing what I thought of as the Lord. And he was seated at the right hand of the throne. Like I could see the throne. Yeah. And, um, and he gave me the scripture. And I, I knew it was from the Lord because I didn't even know what the scripture was had meant like i hadn't read it before did not know hmm. and it was joel it was joel 223 and that's where it's talking about the former rain and the latter rain together that's right yes yes wow. I, I don't know exactly <laughs> maybe you could help me clarify what the lord was telling me but i really feel like it was such a time as as this and how the whole world like is being affected by the virus but yet at the same time i feel like the whole world is going to see the lord in a new light um that there's going to be this great revival yes all around there the is world. that's right so so what we and must it's gonna be part of that great awakening yes and it's coming I believe that there's going to be one yes. great last major push before the coming of the Lord. And, uh, and, and God is getting you ready. God, Stacy, got it right there in Owensboro, in your corner of the world. God is getting Tia ready over in Washington, over in Kentucky. God is getting you ready and, 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 and Joanne and Jim in Kentucky and so many Everywhere, God is getting us, preparing us, and getting us ready for this great awakening. And uh, yes. I, I wanted to pull up the scripture, but I, I want to read it in a particular uh, translation here. And I, I want to give this to you because I believe that it states here, Be glad then, ye children of Zion, that's us, the church, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you, the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. Together, this is the rain of the Holy Spirit. This is the outpouring of the Spirit of God. Some people say, well, that was fulfilled in the upper room in the book of Acts, but I believe it's still yet to be fulfilled. I believe that what the Lord Amen. started, he's going to perfect it. He's going he's to go all the way with completion. Philippians 1 says that he's that begin a good work will perform it to the day of his coming. And so the Lord is getting you ready. He's getting you ready. And maybe, maybe the big room with all the people you're speaking to might be figurative. It might not necessarily be an auditorium, but it might be all the people that are coming to you that you'll have their ear, that you can minister to them and, and speak a word of hope and encouragement to them. Boy, I, I think that's just an awesome dream. When did you have that, Stacy? probably about two years ago and yeah you know, i woke up this morning and i kept thinking of 
2020. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it just kept going in my head. 2020. And 2020 being the perfect vision. Yeah, that's it. And I'm like. What? Now, did you hear me I'm talk like, about oh. that in 2019? No, I did not. Okay. I, you have struck a chord with me because the Lord gave this to me in 2019. And when I ministered around, I take it for granted. I think everybody hears me in my meetings, but. When he gave this to me, he said we'd have perfect vision in 2020, and he asked me to ask people to sow a seed of $20.20 and tell them to stand on Second Chronicles 2020. So I was so excited, Stacy. I ran over and to look at 2020, Second Chronicles 2020, and it says, Obey my prophet, so shall you prosper. And the Lord said that those who are sowing a seed of $20.20 there's going to be a major prosperity release into their life. Well, that's really nearly easy for everybody to do. I mean, there's some people who can't do that. But God never asks you for what you don't have. And, and he just wants our faith. He doesn't need our money. He wants our faith. But you said this, and now this strikes another chord with me and brings me back to remembering what the Lord already spoke to me, that Jesus is bringing us into new vision that's 2020, and to stand on the prophetic flow for a new year of 2020, of prophetic words coming to pass. And so, sis, this Amen. really, oh, this blesses me. I'm so glad you brought this up to me. I had no idea you were going to tell me this. There are many people that could go right now to monthlypartners.com and sow a 2020 seed and believe that obey the prophet, so shall you prosper, and watch and see God do the rest. It, it opens the door Amen. for many things to happen. And... Wow, Stacy. So how much longer do you have to go? Go ahead. Oh, I just started. I just started in January. So I don't know how long it's going to exactly take me. Uh, I'm just going to do what I can. And I'll finish when the Lord says, you know, it's, it's time. Let me encourage you to go all the way and be a finisher. Finish what you started. Oh, just, amen. Yeah, I'll just amen. encourage you there. All right. I, I also wanted to say uh, real quick before we hang up is that I think that possibly, too, what the Lord was telling, because you had said something about our last conversation about me being a healer, and maybe that was the Lord saying, because I didn't see people in, you know, in the room yet, that these are people that I'm going to heal. Yeah. Coming. Yes, yes, I believe that. I so believe that. When I say a healer, we're all healers in the name of Jesus. Jesus is the healer, but we walk with that healing abilities in us, and uh, there's no doubt in my mind that the Lord will not only use you to bring healing to this generation, to their mind, but also to their body, and it, it would not surprise me if God gave you miracles right there as you prayed for people. Be bold. Expect God to do it. He's the great healer and the deliverer and the miracle giver. And I, I have faith to believe that with you, Stacy. He's preparing you, see. Amen. And what the education is going to do is it's going to give you the credibility to walk into doors that were previously locked to you. I feel the prophetic flow right there. That now with the education, Amen. you're going to have the ability to walk through doors that were previously locked. And now they're open to you in Jesus' name. You receive that? I receive it. Stacy. I was supposed to come be with uh, you all in Owensboro, and it's been pushed off. I, we're looking at all of our meetings are, are postponed for another date. But when I come, I want you to round up as many people as you can and bring them to the meeting, will you? I sure will. What was the last meeting you were at with me in Owensboro? Do you remember? Um, It was probably in 2018. At uh, Pastor Frieda's church. At Pastor Frieda's church, Thurston Methodist Church. Wow, that's great. Well, maybe you can come again and bring everybody you know, and I'm going to continue praying for you, okay? Okay, thank so, you wait, so much. Are you praying with us when we're praying for others? Absolutely. Good, I appreciate that. Thank you, Stacy. God bless you. I'll bless your, your schoolwork, too. Wow. There's some good people in this world. She has a heart and a desire to minister to people in a homeless shelter. 
That's really neat. Father, I pray that you just touch Stacy. Give her that healing power in her hands and give her that healing power in her voice, oh God. Right there in Owensboro to minister to, to women that are hurting, to women that have given up, women that are in fear, women that have been abused and abandoned and let down. Oh God, let your spirit move through Stacy, Lord. Give her the tongue of the learned. Give her the words of wisdom that would go from her to them. In Jesus' name. Oh yes, Lord. What a night this has been. Father, we stand with Sheila right now. I take authority over every demon power that has tried to come against her granddaughter or her daughter who's on her way to emergency in the ambulance. In the name of Jesus, Satan, you take your hands off of her. You loose her. You loose her and let her go in the name of Jesus. And Father, give us a miracle. She needs a miracle right now. Holy Spirit, go right now in the back of that wagon, Lord, and angels of the Lord. That's it. Angels of the Lord, go right now. Go right now. Go right now in Jesus' name. Come on, Stacy. Agree. Come on, James. Agree. Come on, Tia. Come on, Sheila. Come on, Debbie. Come on, let's agree. In Jesus' name, we pray right now. Oh, yes. In Jesus' name, we, we plead the blood of Jesus over her daughter. Devil, you can't have her. You let her loose. You turn her loose in Jesus' name. Oh, thank you, Father, for the fire of the Holy Ghost that comes now, for the anointing that comes afresh in Jesus' name. No negative report. No bad news in the name of Jesus. Just like the Bible says. Just like the Bible says. Oh, thank you, Lord. I got the Holy Ghost down in my heart just like the bible says i got the holy ghost down in my heart just like the bible says been to the river and i've been baptized felt the fire touch me and i'm satisfied ha Take that devil, take your hands off my sister, take your hands off my brother, loose them and let them go in Jesus' name. Loose them right now. Oh God, save her soul. Bring deliverance, oh God. Jesus, bring salvation to her mind, to her spirit, in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. River and I've been baptized. Now the fire touch me and I'm satisfied. Just like the Bible says it. You don't have to think that it's for the old days. It's for now. Right now, brother. You can get the Holy Ghost and power now. You can have the Holy Ghost and power now in the name of Jesus. Somebody's watching and you've been rejected. You've been rejected by somebody. And it hurts your heart to think about that. But the Lord says that rejection, all it was, was God trying to save you some, from some kind of danger. Hey, hey, hey! I know what rejection is better than most all y'all. Holy Ghost prophetic, anointed minister of the gospel. I've been, I've been rejected by most people. But I've never been rejected by Jesus. And if I got him, that's all I need. Hey! The river and I've been baptized. Felt the fire touch me. I'm satisfied. I don't need men's approval. Just need one. Just need one man's approval. That's all you got. The Apostle Paul said, confer not with flesh. Do I need to explain that?
I'm thinking about Jesus tonight. I'm not thinking about the sorrows. I'm not thinking about the bad news of this world. I'm not thinking about all the trouble. We'll study war no more. We're not going to study disease or pain or heartache or sickness or... No, no, no. We got our eyes on Jesus tonight. Mighty God, mighty God. Way past my time, but I want to take your call tonight. The number's right in front of your nose. Pick up the phone. Have some boldness. Let me hear from you. I want to pray with you. Sheila, we're praying. We're believing. Yes, connect with Tia. I'm telling you, some of you are going to connect. James, I really want to hear your testimony. I've got a few minutes. I'd love for you to call it in. Somebody needs to hear this. This is radical. Heavenly Father, I appreciate you. Heavenly Father, I appreciate you. Do you appreciate him tonight? I love you. I adore you. I bow down before you. Heavenly Father, I appreciate you. Son of God, I appreciate you. Son of God, I appreciate you. Oh, yes, I do. Jesus, I love you, adore you, I bow down before you. I was with a woman in the mall, and she said, I adore that dress. She was a godly woman, and the Holy Spirit just shot up within me and said, I don't like that word. What? He said, adoration is a form of worship. Holy Spirit, I appreciate you. Holy Spirit, I appreciate you. Do you love the Holy Spirit? I love you. <laughs> Come on. Adore you. I bow down before you. Holy Spirit, I appreciate Yes, Sheila. We pray that nicotine addiction, all the bondages from off of her, not by might nor by power, but by his spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over that nicotine. I command it to get off of her. We break it. We break it from off of her right now. Let God's purpose come in upon her. In the name of Jesus, I love you, adore you. Come on, tell the Holy Spirit. I bow down before you, Holy Spirit, I appreciate you. Pastor Gill from Pakistan, boy, am I glad to see you with us tonight. Wow, all the way on the other side of the world, but we're right close together. We're working, Pastor Gill, at hooking international callers up through WhatsApp. So keep, keep being patient with me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. For Sheila is in Tennessee right now. And, Lord, you're going you're gonna to be upon her daughter as she's transported by the ambulance. Lord, set her free. Set her free. Set her free. It's not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, oh, God. I thank you, Lord, for all these callers that have called in. Oh, yes, take the power of cigarettes and nicotine from off of her. Take the desire away from her. He keeps me singing everywhere I go. Hallelujah. Yeah, we call it done. That's right. I call her. What's on your What's on your mind tonight? Yeah, this is uh, James. Brother James, I am so happy you called. Now, don't be nervous. I know you won't. But you've got a testimony that's powerful and it rocks hell. And I want to share, if I can put you on the spot, I, oh, I'm so happy you called. You know, I'd rather you call than some of the most famous preachers because you're a walking miracle when people hear what the Lord's done in your life. You, you are a Native American in Washington State. You've been in our meetings before. 
And uh, we know your relatives. You have a great, great, wonderful family, godly people. I don't know where you want to start, but tell us what happened in your life. Well, when I was um, growing up, I wasn't, I was not raised in church. Um, I was raised in a pretty rough environment. Um, you know, it's a little bit, um, a little bit uh, it's embarrassing sometimes to talk about it, but it's all glory to God. Is you know, my family were kind of like drug dealers and stuff, and so I was raised in that environment. And then, uh, well, my mom got saved when I was about 12 years old, and she started praying over me and reading the Bible. And uh, I think I say it's a little bit hard. It's the only time I really like to talk about it is if I testify because I started using drugs at a really young age and um, started drinking alcohol at a really young age. And I was didn't know any different that it was right or wrong. And then my mom got saved, and she started praying over me and reading the Bible. Like when I would come home intoxicated, um, she would come in my room and talk to me about the Lord. And I got mad at first um, when she first started reading the bible and praying over me and stuff like that but it wasn't rude or nothing but i was just it was just really different for me to hear my mom talk but i could tell there was a change in her and um she did did that for years and she uh, invited me to go to church several times and i finally went to church one time i went to church there and uh there used to be a lot of um evangelists that would come to Tahola where I was raised uh, in the, my my reservation back then in the 90s there was a, there was a revival that was going on that um, a lot of people started getting saved and my mom was one of them like I said she got saved when I was 12 I finally went to church when I was 16 and um brother jay swallow he gave an altar call and i went down and gave my heart to the lord when i was 16. and it wasn't much after long after i gave my heart to the lord i remember one of the things he told me when i answered the altar call he said your life will never be the same again and that if you ask jesus for anything he won't let you down or you know he just he, he told me some words and i i didn't forget him but uh after i gave my heart to the lord i stopped using drugs and i stopped drinking just cold turkey but i wasn't delivered i quit on my own you know not knowing any better and the devil came at me full force and um I had never thought about killing myself before that time, but after I gave my heart to Jesus, I I got bombarded with these thoughts in my mind, and um, I ended up taking a 22 rifle, and I was going to shoot myself on the left side of my chest, and I, right at the last second, I pointing it over to the right side of my chest and uh, thinking that you know I was I I don't know what you know it's just a, uh, something that happened and then once I pulled the trigger the bullet pierced through my lung and went into my heart even though I pointed it to the right side of my chest it uh, ricocheted off into my lung and went into my heart. And um, it was like, soon as I realized I did that, I knew that I messed up and I was 
over in the backyard of my house and I ran to the front of my house and I I remember going in and I seen blood all over my chest and I told my mom what I had did and my mom freaked out when she started praying for me. And um, the, my testimony is, is that when I got to the hospital, they told me my blood pressure was zero and they ran me through these um, CAT scans and x-rays and stuff and as soon as they figured out I had a bullet inside of my heart they shipped me to Harborview in Seattle and the hospital at the Harborview didn't know what to do so they shipped me over to uh, the U University Hospital UW Hospital and uh, the doctors at that time told me they really didn't know what to do because they had never had anybody that had came in that had lived with a bullet in their heart. And so by that time, I, I, um, the only thing I could do was pray. And so I had a lot of people gathered around me that prayed. And, um, the devil tried to take me out when I was 16 and God spared my life. And so I give Jesus all the glory for that. All the glory. Thank God. You, you're walking with a bullet in your heart, and the doctors didn't know what to do, but all this time the Lord's had his hand on you. <laughs> it's just amazing that, that that happened. And, you know, you know this, that Jesus forgives you of all that. But even more than that, to give your test to be alive, to be able to tell your testimony and reach out every day and thank God for your life every day you live with that bullet in your heart is a gift from the Lord, isn't it? Yes. Wow. Yes, I, I, I it changed my life in so many ways, knowing that, um, knowing that it's only God's mercy that um, you know, it, it, it was a pretty harsh thing in Tohola was I found out later on, well, there was several people that committed suicide after that. So some of them were my cousins and some of them were close friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, we found out later that there was a devil of suicide that was roaming to and fro and on the Clement Reservation. Yes. And um, there was so why there was so many, you know, I mean, I didn't, I didn't understand that stuff until, um, you know, I had some preachers that told me, uh, actually, uh, it was um, Brother Waltz. Uh, I don't know if you knew Brother Waltz or not. Yes. Brother and Sister Waltz, they were from Lyle, Washington. Yes, yes. They were missionaries, and um, they, Brother Waltz prayed over me. I actually went up to his church. It's almost, it's like getting to the Oregon border, then you take a right or a left up to the Columbia River there. His church is about, I, I think he's passed away now, but he, they were really, really powerfully used of the Lord. And I went up there when I was 18 because I kept getting tormented. Even after I was, I went through all that stuff when I was 16, I kept getting tormented by these thoughts that would come to me. And um, a lot of times I'd just be doing nothing, just sitting around or talking with people and I would get these like snapshot visions that would come to my mind and tell me to kill myself or these different things. And it was tormenting me and that's why I, uh, I drove up to to talk to Brother Waltz and I explained to him what was going on with me and um, he took me to the back of his church and he started praying in the Holy Spirit and he prayed about five minutes and he prayed ten minutes fifteen about thirty minutes went by then pretty soon about forty five minutes to an hour went by and he started jumping up and down and shouting he was praying in the tongues, praying in the Holy Spirit that whole time. Yeah. And he told me, he said, that he seen a dark cloud that was 
that um, came around me when I was a kid. And as I grew older, this cloud got bigger, and it was the, this devil of suicide, and that it was it was um, oppressing me. And he seen that spirit leave when he was praying. He seen it um, leave off of me, and I saw like a ton of bricks had lifted off my shoulders at that time. And I had I've never. Um, had no trouble ever since then with those thoughts, but wow. he told me that that um, God delivered me right there, and that that um, if that devil ever tries to come talk to me again, to just don't entertain it and rebuke it in the name of Jesus, and yes, to yes, yes, that I'm free from it. And so that was when I finally got delivered was when I was 18 from those tormenting thoughts but it was all through prayer and really seeking in and um you know uh looking for deliverance from those things that were uh, trying to overpower my mind yes yes james i want you to wait right there for just a moment i i sense in my spirit somebody is listening maybe in las vegas maybe in Phoenix or Orlando or Daytona Beach or right there on Periscope, Facebook, YouTube. I don't know where you are. But maybe maybe you're hearing the same thoughts that James heard. Perhaps you're walking around with a dark cloud over your life and you didn't know what it was. It was there since childhood. Maybe you don't even know how you got on this program. One man was driving through Las Vegas and the radio came on by itself and there I was preaching to him. I don't know exactly how the Lord brought you here, but I want you to know that the same God that delivered James and had mercy on him and redirected that bullet, I'm sure James, maybe one more centimeter it must have lodged in the perfect spot. If it's going to lodge, it must have lodged in the perfect spot for you to still be living. Yes. Somebody right now is thinking about quitting and giving up. You'll find Jesus is not too busy to hear your, your heart's cry. Don't hang up, James. We're going to pray. Reach out and touch the Lord as Jesus goes by. Reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by. Pray, pray, church. You'll find he's not too busy to hear, to hear your heart's cry. Jesus is passing by this moment. Your needs, he'll supply. You don't have to commit suicide. Reach out and touch the Lord as Jesus James, I want you to talk to the man or to the woman who feels like giving up, who maybe has those same thoughts. You can't see them. You may be clear across the United States or on the other side of the world in Washington State, but you're living proof. You're a walking miracle with a 22-bullet slug lodged in your heart. You could have been dead, but God kept you for this time. Talk to somebody. Yes, um, I would just like to pray and ask right now that the anointing of the Holy Spirit would touch you and uh, um, that you can know that if you call on Jesus, he'll never fail you and that no matter what we go through in life, that God knows our needs and he knows that every hair that's on our head, he knows that... Uh, 
he's take, taken care of us and he knew us since we were even in, before we were in our mother's womb and that if you ask Jesus to help you right now that he will deliver you from this wicked thoughts or whatever it is that torments you whatever yes, it is yes. that makes you feel bad that Jesus paid the ultimate price for us that if we just believe in his name and that we call upon him that he will deliver us and that with the power of two or three agreeing in Jesus name that God will touch you and take you out of that pit that place that makes you feel like there is no hope Oh, yes, yes, Lord. Answer for all that we need. Thank you, Jesus. And I've went, lived through many times in my life where it seemed like I had no hope. Um, I actually went through a time where I was married and I lost my first wife in a car accident. And after that, I didn't know what to do. I, I did know what to do, but, you, you know, you go through sometimes where you feel hopeless. And I knew that Jesus had his hand upon my life, yes, regardless of yes. the things that we go through, no matter how tormenting it is to our mind, that God knows our needs and that he, if we wait upon the Lord and we believe that he hears us, he will deliver us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. Father, I mix my faith with James right now. I pray that the Holy Spirit of God reach down. Reach down and touch my brother, touch my sister, no matter where they are. In the name of Jesus, I bind up that spirit of suicide. I, I take authority over those thoughts right now. That dark cloud of oppression, you demon spirit, I... I bind you now in Jesus' name. You take your hands off my brother. You take your hands off my sister. Loose them right now. Loose them, loose them, and let them go in Jesus' name. Now, Jesus, I ask you to pass by my brother and my sister. The miracle that you gave James allowed him to live all these years. I ask, Lord, that you touch my brother, touch my sister, and show them the purpose of their life. Enlighten the eyes of their understanding that they may know what is the hope of God's calling, what is the riches of his glory, and what is the greatness of God's power in their life. In the name of Jesus, we won't settle for that old spirit of death or suicide. No, no. In Jesus' name, I plead the blood and all shame, all guilt, has to leave your mind. You have a purpose, sir. Ma'am, you have a purpose in this life. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for it, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Bless them. Bless them right now. Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. James, I so appreciate you calling. I, I'm just struck with awe and amazement every time I hear your testimony and and you've experienced gone through so much sorrow but the lord delivered you out of it all didn't he yes yes beautiful yes well i really appreciate you being a partner with me and and praying with me and believing with me like i said your family's special and i appreciate you i want you to call again okay james we'll share it again yes all right yes. I love you, brother. Keep on living for the Lord. Yes. Amen. Oh, yes. Keep living for the Lord. That's what it's about, living for Jesus. Can you imagine? You know God's hands on you when you wake up every morning and you think, wow, he spared my life. He spared you. There's some of you right now, you don't even know that he spared you. There's some of you been in dangerous situations and you don't even know he kept you from death. You, you don't even know that he kept death's door, for, kept it away from you, covered by the blood. Thank God, Brother James, you had 
Brother Walt, so close by, you know, a mighty man of God. Now he's gone on to be with the Lord, I understand. Mm -mm -mm. He's not too busy to hear your heart's cry. Father, I pray that salvation comes as we open up our hearts to you, Lord. Sal salvation and deliverance comes to my brother and to my sister in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, that we're going to praise you even in this situation, Lord. I feel like praising the Lord after I hear that. I feel like praising him, James. I feel a shout coming on. You got so much to be thankful for. You got so much to be thankful for right now. You ought to just thank the Lord. But even if you don't know what it was, he, he saved you from harm and danger. You ought to just throw your hands up high and just say, thank you, Lord. I feel like praising you for keeping me out of death's harm's way and death's door. I feel like praising, praising him. <laughs> I feel like praising, praising him. Go ahead and praise him tonight. What a remarkable story to know that God's hand is on you even still. I feel like praising, praising him. Actually, what feel what has feelings got to do with it? I praise him when I feel like it and when I don't. Somebody got set free tonight. Sonny, God set somebody free. Tia, the Lord has set somebody free tonight. Dallas from Atlanta, God set somebody free. Sheila from Nashville, God setting your daughter free. Teresa from Iowa. Pastor from Pakistan. Joanne from Kentucky and my, my, my. Darlene from Oregon and goodness sake. James from Washington and Daniel from Washington and I feel like praise and Liana from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Stacy from Kentucky. Pastor Nathan, probably in Florida. Bless you, Pastor. Yes, 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 yes. Debbie from Yuma, Arizona. I feel like praise and praise and Pastor Wendell from Alabama. My Lord and my God. Hallelujah. It may be late night where you are, but I'm shouting the victory. Pastor David from Louisville. Candy from Richland, Washington. Oh, we got a lot of Washington watchers tonight. Kim from Kentucky. I'm telling you, your son's coming home. God's going to touch him. Robin from Portland. Scott from Alabama. Uh-huh. The list going on and on and on tonight. I feel like praising, praising him. Some of these songs are so old, if you didn't remember the words, you, you won't find them. <laughs> Pastor Tony from Alabama, I miss you, brother. Yes, I feel like praising, praising God. Hey, Tim, God bless you, brother. Chad, oh my, good to see you, Chad. Praise the Lord, also from Washington. I feel Ted from Washington. Brad, God bless you, Brad. Becca from Washington. Boy, Washington chimed in. Jane from Washington. Wow, lots of Washingtonians listening tonight. Yep, that's right, we're, we're praising the Lord and and uh, I thank God for each and every one of you. I'm, I'm running out of time. I thank the Lord that he's let me be here. I cannot do it without your support, and without your help. And so I'm asking you, and I've asked God to give me one person to sow a $1,000 seed tonight by going to monthlypartners.com. Don't say it in your mind. Let somebody else do it. Ask the Lord. He's going to help you. Yes, Lacey from Crossville, Tennessee. Glory to God. Amen. Yes, we're going to pr continue praying, Sheila, for your daughter who's on her way to the hospital, and I want you to continue to let me know through the night as we're going to continue praying for her. 
If all you can do is sow $20.20, believing God, standing on 2 Chronicles 20, 20, obey your prophets, so shall you prosper. You sow into that scripture, we're going to believe God for prosperity in your year. This is the year to prosper and not to lose. Big prosperity is coming. I sense that. You may not see it right now, but I sense it. You can also give by way of Cash App, those of you listening by radio. Boy, does Atlanta like to use, the people of Atlanta love to use Cash App. If you haven't downloaded Cash App, you should. It's an easy, convenient way to give to the man of God. Sow your seed tonight at Cash App. It's a dollar sign and then sowing woods. That's the code that you use. Or the easiest way to do it is to go online to monthlypartners.com, monthlypartners.com. You can do it monthly or you can do it one time. There's a little box you can check. And I want to challenge every person that's listening on radio and those of you watching by way of social media to become a partner with me and you watch and see what the Lord does for you in this time that you're sowing. Don't wait for good times to sow. <laughs> they sowed in a time of fam famine. You know that, right? Yes, they sowed in a time of famine. And although we're not in famine, we're in another crisis. We're not going to be a part of this crisis in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Built for me in glory. Sister Regina, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in tonight. I cried, Jesus, come and heal my broken. Lacey, your husband lays in ICU with pneumonia and sepsis. Yes, we're going to declare healing right now. Are you ready? Come on, victory in Jesus. Victory in Jesus, my Savior. Father, touch Lacey's husband right now. You foul devil of pneumonia and sepsis, I command you to loose your hold from off of his body. You loose your hold. You loose your grip. You go from him now. Go now. The blood of Jesus is over him right now. In the name of Jesus, we declare healing and victory. Victory right now. In the name of Jesus. Sheila, I got to tell you, a brother called me from Idaho. His baby was in life flighted to Salt Lake City, Utah, and it was a bad situation. And he tuned in. His mother in Kentucky told him about us. He tuned in, just like you're doing now, and we prayed right live on the spot, reaching our faith out there. And within hours, within hours, everything was coming off. Everything was going. And that baby's home now, safe and sound. And in the same, in the same move of the Spirit, oh, we pray for Sheila. We pray right now for Lacey, Lord, that you touch her husband. Devil, you get off of his body right there in that ICU. I command everything to change. Take a turn. Take a turn for the better. You loose him. Come up out of that bed. You come up out of that bed. You shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. I command your body to come up now. There's no time, distance, or space in the realm of the Spirit. And in Jesus' name, based on the authority that I have in the blood of the Lamb, I command you to be healed. I command you to be made whole. In Jesus' name, loose him. Lose him, lose him, let him go in Jesus' name. Woo, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody praise the Lord. Somebody praise him. Lacey, your husband's coming up out of that bed. I declare it in Jesus' name. I declare it in the name of Jesus. Everybody that's agreeing in the sound of my voice, give me some hearts. Come on, give me some hearts. The blood of Jesus is what that stands for. On this program, that's what it stands for. Come on, give me some hearts. Give me some hearts. Come on, give me some hearts. In the name of Jesus, there's victory right now. There we go. There's victory in Lacey's home right now. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Father. No weapon, no weapon, no weapon formed against him. Oh, Jesus, no weapon formed against him shall prosper. When I feel the Savior's hand... Reach down and touch him right now. Jesus, touch him in that hospital room. Yes, Lord, do it, Father. Hi, caller, what's on your mind tonight? 
Hallelujah. I believe in that husband killed and face the battle of that hospital bed in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Joanne is one of my intercessors in Kentucky, and she's been agreeing. I think Lacey is also in Kentucky. I'm not quite sure. I don't remember, Lacey. Forgive me. I feel the fire of God, don't you, Joanne? I feel the fire of God all over the place. God is doing some things. Suicide, that devils are going. Spirits of fear are going. Addictions are falling off. Freedoms are coming. Deliverances are coming. Healings are coming. It's miraculous. Yes, it's God. Did you know that there was a night that Jim was accepted uh, in 2013, I think it was? No, I didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, it was when he got bit by that spider and his foot um, was real bad. That, that a brown recluse or something like that. Yeah. And um, I heard the voice of the Lord tell me, and this why I called in, I heard the voice of the Lord tell me, Jim's going to be okay. And I said, oh, okay, praise God. He's going to be okay. I didn't say fervent in faith. And uh, so he, I got a word of the Lord. I just stand to believe. But I didn't say fervent. And um, I know about fervency now, and I'm being fervent for this woman's husband because I know how to go into that fervent realm. Yeah. And my spirit's there while I'm talking. And um, the next day he got worse. His foot got so hot, I could not hang on to it. Wow. It was burning my hands to hang on to his foot. It got so hot. Yeah. And all I could think to do was put it up on a pillow try to get air. I was wide and thank you grab ice. I don't know. It just everything happened so fast. And um, so I just began to follow the instructions of the Holy Spirit. Do this, do this, do this, do this. And then God said, okay, don't do anything else. And uh, now just believe. Just believe. And so uh, his foot began to cool down a little bit. But I still felt like I don't know if we're out of the woods with this. You know, it was, it was scary. And uh, we explained to a nurse, um, practitioner um, one step away from a doctor and uh, she said that she said your husband went, went sepsis that's what happened and uh, Jim was staying in there with me when we were talking to her and um, I just believe I called um, ma'am I want you to know David Woods stand, stood with us that night and he prayed he prayed I could have lost my husband that time yeah. but he stood with us and he stood in faith believing and he prayed and uh in, in the night, it was either Jesus or an angel came and ministered healing to my husband's body. And he woke up the next day, and he was fine. And his foot healed up. You can't tell anything was ever wrong with it. So I know the power of the Holy Ghost. I know yeah. the resurrection power. David Woods says six people raised up from the dead. Yeah. We believe this. Twice. We're standing in faith for your right now in Jesus' name. Yes, yes. Lacey, we're believing for a, do a good report. We believe the report of the Lord, and I believe he's, I see him putting on his pajamas. He's going to come up out of that hospital in Jesus' name. Yes, in Jesus. Sheila, I believe a good, re a good report for your daughter. Mm hmm Yes, David, can I pray? <laughs> I just want to lift this to the Lord. Please. Lord Jesus, I just lift these brothers and sisters. I lift these situations to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, I pray that you send your angels into these situations now. Yes. In Jesus' name. I pray for healing power of God to fall upon them in Jesus' mighty name. And not only heal their bodies, but set them free from anything that they may need to be set free from. I pray the fire of God will burn through their bodies and pour healing into their bodies to break every yoke, to destroy every yoke of bondage in the name of Jesus. And angels go forth, carry this healing, carry, carry deliverance, carry salvation. We claim salvation in the mighty yes, name of Jesus. Yes, yes, we yes. declare every bond is destroyed by the power of the blood of Jesus. There is nothing too difficult for God. There is nothing too difficult for God. There is nothing too nothing. difficult for God Almighty. He spoke the world into existence with the sound of his voice. That's and right. He speaks healing over these people now in the name of Jesus, because Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life. We lose the spirit of resurrection. Yes, Lord. In, the mighty name of Jesus. in Jesus' name. That's right. Yes, Lord, do it. Do it right now, Lord. We believe we receive it. 
And Father, I lift up James' wife to you, dealing with diabetic issues and feeling sick right now, Lord. I speak a new pancreas over her body. I command that pancreas to be made whole. Thank you, Father, for the releasing of the right insulins, the right sugars, the right nutrients right now going through her body. Give her strength, O oh God, in Jesus' name. I take authority over every diabetes. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I command you to get off of her. You loose her. Loose her now. Let her go in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, touch every person to the sound of my voice. Father, touch that man in Orlando. Touch that woman in Daytona Beach. Touch that man in, in Las Vegas. Oh, God, have mercy upon him in Las Vegas, Lord. Upon that one listening in Phoenix, Arizona, Jesus, come down like a dove of the Holy Spirit right now. Touch him, Lord, in Jesus' name. Jesus, pour out your spirit. Thank you, Father, for the anointing afresh that comes right now. There's no lack. There's no shortage in the things of the kingdom of God. And, oh, God, I thank you that you're a miracle worker. Lord, do a new thing. You said you'd do a new thing. And, Father, I thank you. I praise you. Come on, somebody ought to praise him right now. Just praise him. Just praise him. I'll praise you, Lord. I give you victory tonight. I give you victory in the name of Jesus. Joanne, almost two hours. I've been, I think maybe three hours. And my clock says two hours. Oh, yeah, almost three hours. I've been live with people. Yeah. Yeah. And for our affiliates on radio, it's been an hour. But there's a couple of things I would like for people to do as I'm running short on time here on this hour. First, I'd like you to receive Jesus as the Lord and Savior of your life. If you haven't done that, I'll walk you through that prayer. But there are many believers that are watching that have not uh, taken the time to subscribe to our YouTube page. Why should you do that? So you can join in on this prayer team every single night, pray with us and believe with us and lend your voice in prayer. And then... I'm asking you to sow, even if it's a little bit. There are some who can sow a large amount, $1,000 for somebody. The Lord said somebody would go to monthlypartners.com, put it on their bank card. They would sow $1,000 into this ministry, not because we need it, but because you need to sow. And then there's several others, the Lord said, that they're going to sow at $20.20 based on 2 Chronicles 2020. Obey the prophet, so shall you prosper. He gave me that in 2019. And I know it's not for everybody, but it's for you. Jesus, I thank you for moving upon my brother, moving upon my sister. Lord, help them to stir in faith. But whatever they can sow into this ministry, oh God, making a difference in the lives of people. Help us, Lord, and use my brother, use my sister. God, you are our source of supply. Not my brother, not my sister. They are simply an instrument that you use. And I look to you, God, as the source of supply. Now, I pray for those who have not received Jesus. It's very simple. Just say it out loud. Say, Jesus, forgive me. I'm a sinner without you. Forgive me of all sin. Wash me in the blood of the Lamb. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I confess with my mouth. Say it right there. I confess with my mouth. Jesus is my Lord. I believe in my heart. God raised Jesus from the dead. Therefore, I'm born again. Now, let's take it a step further. Get bold. Get bold. Say, get your hands off me, devil. Come on, say it out loud. Say, get your hands off me in the name of Jesus, devil. Loose me and let me go. Say, Holy Spirit, I yield to your presence. Holy Spirit, come upon me. Come in me and come upon me tonight. I receive the precious Holy Spirit tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. Oh, there it is. There it is. That's it. You're a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things become new if you said that tonight. You're a brand new person. You might be driving in your car through the desert of Arizona. You might be driving in your car in Charlotte, North Carolina, or headed to Los Angeles. You don't even know how this radio came on, but God has a miracle word for you. And today, if you said that prayer, you're born again, you're saved. Oh, I want you to get that so strong in your spirit tonight. You're saved. You're not lost. You're not going to hell. You're going to be with Jesus. Do you hear me? Yeah, you're going to be with the Lord Jesus. 
And I want you to declare that tonight. I want you to make that declaration that you're going to be with the Lord. You're not going to hell. I'm going to heaven. Say that out loud. Say, I'm not going to hell. I'm going to heaven because of what the blood of Jesus has done for you. Hallelujah. What he's done for you, you're going to live as the results of that. Joanne, it's exciting to know when somebody's been born again. Are rejoicing, and I'm joining you. I'm rejoicing with the angels. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. They got saved. They got saved. It's wonderful. They, they what it's all about. Welcome. Wow. Yes, welcome to the family. You're right. I right, say that again. Welcome to the family of God. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Not to the family of fear, but to the family of faith. You're part of it. Joanne, you're going to be sticking around, taking a few calls, and we're going to go off the air, but I thank God for so many. If you haven't done it yet, go to monthlypartners.com. Help me. Help me in this venture. It takes a lot to do what we're doing, but God's helping me with people just like you. I love you, Joanne. I love Jim. Give Jim a big hug for me, all right? God bless you all, and I appreciate every caller. Every caller. Think about the Lord tonight before you go to bed. Don't think about the world system. Think about Jesus. Think about, put your mind on the Lord before you go to bed tonight. In the name of Jesus. Some of you became friends with other people right here on Facebook. Don't forget, subscribe to my YouTube.